This video is sponsored by Deep Cut Studios. For a wide range of fantastic gaming resources such as battle mats, dice trays and pre-painted bases, check out the description below. Hi guys and welcome back to TNG Productions. My name is Tom and I'm joined by the wonderful... Darren! It's been a while since we've done this. It seems like an absolute eon It's always ago. been like years because, you know, there's been a pandemic and stuff and we live in the northwest of the UK. Something, something happened. Something happened. Something happened that meant... Stop, stop this game. Just don't live between Preston and Manchester because basically everyone else gets to do stuff and record. We, we don't. So we've not played in a very, very long time. So we're on to season three of our Malifaux Battle Reports. You begged for it, you wanted it, you asked for it and we delivered. One, one person asked for it. But anyway, I'm going to be playing the Guild and I'm going to be using Nelly, because we've not used them yet. Who are you bringing along? I've gone down the corny route and I'm bringing resurrectionists. You're bringing the resurrectionists, you're bringing the arch nemesis of journalists everywhere, Seamus. Well, he has a slight history of Molly, but yeah, Seamus, the most wanted man in Malfo. Most wanted man in Malfo, indeed. So, we are going to be taking you through a narrative style battle report using the new Gaining Grounds 2. Yeah, which is fantastic Gaining Grounds. I really, really like really, the new strats. Really it's really good fun. But, of course, we've not played in a whole year. We've certainly not recorded in absolutely ages. So just take this with a pinch of salt. Take it with the enjoyment that we have playing in Keyword. Because we will be terrible. Yeah, got to see how much goes on Nelly's cards. Anyway, more importantly, I do have this, which is a Zoraida Core box set, which I'm going to give away on behalf of Weird Games, who very kindly sent it as a little bit of promotion for us. Um, I want you to watch this battle report, folks. I want you to tell us in the comments section below who you think the MVP was, the best character in the game, who pulled off the best play, and uh, how are we going to do this? We will announce it two weeks later. We're going to let yeah. you pick, Darren. You can pick yeah. your favourite. Two weeks after this video goes live, we're going to announce it in the channel community page. So make sure you're subscribed so you'll be able to see that pop up in your feed. And I will send this to you as a congratulations. And don't just pick one of his to get the vote. No, no, because, well, if you pick the Pixel deck based off the Mizaki game, yeah, they'd probably give them that to you, but we'll have to wait and see what happens in this one. So we'll show you the crews and we'll be back in a sec. And this is my crew for this season of Battle Reports. We've not had the guild on the channel yet, so let's get three Battle Reports with them. They're led by the wonderful Nelly, who's a really, really interesting master. Now, I'm going to say right in advance, she's also absolute YouTube suicide trying to play her on camera because if anyone has seen her card alone, let alone the rest of the crew, there is an absolute dissertation of text on there. So I am not going to be hitting everything because we're learning to play, but we'll do our best. But her main mechanic is all about kind of the interact action. She can either manipulate other people to get to do it, or she can gain bonuses when enemies are forced to. She's asking them their important questions and the things they don't want to divulge. So we're pretty much all in keyword. We've got Nelly at the front here, Two henchmen, we've got Alison Dade and Fiona Gage. We've got one Enforcer, which is our undercover reporter, who actually starts the game buried, which is really fun. We've got our totem in the printing press, and then we've got a field reporter and a false witness who shares a keyword with Lucius. And just to help them out, we've got the big pony, the pale rider. He's pretty much essential for them, just for a bit of movement shenanigans, and he's my only real source of healing, so he's also there just to support. But expect to see them kind of going across the middle ground and trying to ask people the important questions to do a bit of damage to them and get them to interact. And here we have Darren's Resurrectionist crew. They're led by the mighty Seamus. And you've got old school with these sculpts. They look awesome. I have gone pure old school. Now, this is actually a, a, a GG1 crew that I bought, but I've gone with first ed models for it. So yeah. it's a little bit of retro. They're all a bit weighty metal. Um, we're starting with the Red Chapel Killer himself. And this is the Red Chapel keyword, uh, Seamus. He's got his bag of tools to... Uh... He's got a big gun. That's what he has. <sighs> He's got a gun. <laughs> it does four, six, eight. He teleports around the board. That's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. Uh, next to him, he's got his totem, which is Mini Me, the copycat killer, which will, as you can see when we get into the game, he swaps places with Seamus. And There's a lot of mistaken identity, isn't there, between Seamus and the copycat there is. killer? There is, but, but even though he's a little, a little leprechaun sat in a hat, he's still terrifying as his bosses. You've got a very good henchman now who's had a buff. Yeah, now, just in the middle of the crew behind them is the... Lovely lady, madam. The lady of the house. Lady of the house. Um, she was in Carver territory at 10 Tollstones, <laughs> but she got dropped a soul stone in GG2 um, in the latest Dorata, and they changed her abilities around. And I think she's really, really worthwhile now. She's fantastic now. Now, you've taken some enforcers to compliment them. You've got one that might as well be in keyword, and one that definitely is in keyword. Yeah, well, one that, one that definitely uh, should be in keyword is the carrier emissary stood at the back. And his main shtick is, for Seamus is that as his bonus action, he can put down two coffin markers within six inches, which is why he's got a coffin next to him. Which facilitates the teleport, but you can also put down mindless zombies, and you've used these uh, really cool sculpts here, haven't you? Yeah, I've used some of the old uh, Rotten Bells 
just because it looks amazing in keyword. Um, the bells themselves, although I'm not using them in this battle report, also received a, 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 buff, yep. a buff because of the changes to Sybil, and I'm looking forward to trying to get them on the table. You've got this beautiful, I mean, they're all beautifully painted, but Bette Noir here with her red into black, which seems notoriously hard to paint. It, it took some time. <laughs> um, she is another damage output. The main thing that she's got is that she can manipulate grave uh, corpse markers wherever they are on the table to make a charge action. Yeah, she's also a burial model, isn't she? So she's very hard to pin down. She is, and if I get the fast trigger on her by pushing other models into her, she can effectively become an, a 4 AP model with yeah. a free charge and then three action points. It's great. And what have we got for the minions then? In terms of minions, starting on the right of the camera, we have the dead Doxy. Now she is a support piece, helps move people around, she can take focus off the enemy and add distracted to them. She's also very, very tough, um, hard to wound. And you've put an upgrade on her as well, haven't you? She's also terrifying 11. And what? finally, if you do hit her in melee, she's got a mask trigger to end, end your activation. Has she got a Grave Spirit's Touch you've put on her? It's Grave Spirit's Touch and Regen 2, just to add to those eight Just because. Just because. Just because it's almost stapled onto them. You got the dandy? I've got the dandy, uh, Willy Wonka. <laughs> Um, he is an anti-schema, so for his bonus action he can remove a scheme or corpse marker and put a corpse marker down, which enables me to do magic shenanigans with corpse markers. Very handy against my crew, you can swap my benefit for yours. It is, and he's, he's also um, got a couple of useful abilities. His melee attack's nothing to speak home about, but he's got a biting insult, which uh, if it goes against a model that's not yet activated can give me a couple of pass tokens for activation control. That's always handy. And then you've got the Mourner, fantastic model. Now, the Mourner, yeah. I, a lot of people don't seem to, to rate them, and you can probably put in the comments why not, but I absolutely love her. Turning Ruthless off is enough for the money, to be Turning honest. Turning Ruthless off, because out of the crew, I think there are, I'm going to say, five terrifying models. Yeah, and you've got six inch aura with the mourner. She also brings a corpse to start the game, which is handy. Which goes into Grey Spirit's Touch, which means I can pull out focus to everybody. Um, and she's got another eight inch ranged attack. So I, for a first time, I'm only taking four soul stones with me because of the expensiveness of Nelly's crew. How many are you bringing today, mate? I'm bringing five. I am lacking in the the one thing that I want on Seamus, which is intuition, to have a look at the top three cards of his deck yeah. and draw a card if he kills anything with that four, six, eight damage gun. But I thought it was worth bringing those five soul stones. And they are, again, beautifully painted. So we'll go and get the board set up and we'll show you what we're playing today. And here we are all set up for today's game and we're in some sort of power plant slash forest thing. The guild have done some dodgy experiments and Nelly's came to investigate. I don't know what Seamus' reason for being here is. Uh, probably just trying to get a uh, Molly version 2. <laughs> just a secondary one he's going to pocket. So we've set up with our standard deployment. This is the uh, Corrupted Ley Lines one where you have five markers and basically if you've got a lodestone with a model next to it at the end of a turn you convert it to your colour and get to your points for it. Aside from that, we've got the scheme pool, which I'll flash on screen. We have got some new ones and some old ones. We've got Let Them Bleed, Hidden Martyrs, Bait and Switch, Breakthrough, and Death Beds. And I will flash on screen which ones myself and Darren have gone for. But we've deployed pretty readily. I've uh, decided just to kind of set myself up in a straight line. You've brought a corpse to the party, as, as Rezzers do. Well, I, I thought, you know, I'm, I aim to create some more during the game. <laughs> Probably, hopefully, not of my models, but yeah, we, we do get to play with them. There's so it's the Mourner who brings one, doesn't she? She puts one down after deployment, uh, conveniently for reasons, just in front of the uh, Doxy. Just conveniently for like pulsing reasons that might happen. For some pulsing reasons, yes. Speaking of reasons, there is a recover, a recover, an undercover reporter who's not on the board because he can deploy buried and basically, unless I say otherwise, he's hiding in his barrel, so he's got shielded and staggered. He can pop out later in the game. Uh, we've got this kind of toxic river that's flowing through, some lovely bridges. Uh, we're just going to call that hazardous poison, just so it doesn't cause too much damage. It's more an inconvenience. It's just something else to think about and uh, gives me a place to put my nice coffee markers on those bridges. Yeah, to block the bridges, the, the you shall not pass approach. But no, I want for this season of battle reports to have some slightly different terrain. I don't think you see hazardous enough, so... Put a big river of it. We'll we've go got with a that. nice mix of hazardous. We've got the severe concealing in the woods. We've got the blocking, which will shameless be important for shameless, <laughs> which, unless I bring my own blocking terrain. Um, and it's, I, I saw when you when you previewed the board, it looks great, and I think the variety of what we're putting out now is there's some really really nice stuff. So I'm, I'm going to do a, to this. I'm going to do a tactical shout out for Andrew Pennington who made these for us. I'll put a link in the description below because he's done a wonderful job, and you can get some commissions from him if you're in the UK. Aside from that, any plans? Just shoot things. Fire the big gun. Well, the the gun may be used. It's, it, it's <laughs> can you not? It, it's usable. Gentleman's it agreement that you don't fire the gun does a little bit of damage. <laughs> Uh, for me, I'm just gonna I'm gonna ask you some questions, blood. I'm gonna ask you like why are you shooting me? Probably is gonna be the main one. 
Uh, aside from that, we flipped for initiative. We got ourselves sorted. I flipped to two. Darren flipped to seven. You've elected for me to go first. I thought, you know, as you're the host. Gentlemanly conduct. So without further ado, let's get this bat rep going. I'm looking forward to this. Okay, so I'm going to start us off. And this is, look, I'm going to remember to do it. You can tell I'm out of practice. I've got this for my starting hand of cards with my lovely Arcane Reservoir, thanks to the Metal Cheat. Spiral. Cheat. Cheat. I've, I've wanted ages to have Arcane Reservoir. Now I have it. Speaking of things that aren't going to do much, I'm going to use Mr. Undercover Reporter here, who's just slightly hiding in the bushes off screen. Um, he's just going to activate, but he's buried. He could use one of his actions, but it's not going to be relevant for now. So he's just going to end his activation. And it's basically a, a fancy pass token there. And so I'm going to start off with a really straightforward look at my hand. No arcane reservoir for me, because I'm not cheating. <laughs> I wish I was playing arcanists again. <laughs> but then res is just as cool. So I'm going to start off with Willy Wonka the Dead Dandy. He's going to start with interacting to place a ski marker down. He's That was for his first action. He's then going to try his bonus action for a proper murder mystery. Targets a scheme or a corpse marker and then drops either a scheme or a corpse marker. Uh, stat 5, target number 12, so he needs a 7. It's a 6. So we will go to a 7. And we are going to turn that scheme marker into that corpse marker. He finds Augustus Gloop in the river. <laughs> in the river. He's, he's flowed all the way down. Uh, and then he's going to round out his turn by concentrating. We've already bigged up Arcane Reservoir, so I'm going to go with my Arcane Reservoir machine. He's just going to casually walk into this kind of surreal terrain here. The lovely printing press. And then he's going to concentrate. I'm not sure what he concentrates on. Maybe the next newspaper article that he's producing. But that is him ready and raring. Okay, so I'm now going to go with the dead Doxy. And because she's got the upgrade for Grey Spirits touch, She's going to take a bonus action to remove this corpse marker, which the mourner friend had brought her. And she's going to pulse out, focus, to many, many, <laughs> many, many. Things. And I'll get more focus tokens because the mourner wants one as well. Uh, she's feeling a bit left out, so she's going to focus again herself. And then she's going to have a wander forward. And she gets plus one move because she's within the aura for the carrion emissary, so any friendly undead within six inches getting plus one movement. This is the flesh crawls. This is the flesh crawls. So with her move of six, she's just going to take a little bit of a wander up to here. The lovely granny false witness here, you know, who's blaming the field reporter, weirdly, as she's pointing at her for kind of some sort of crime, is really simply going to put a ski mark down by interacting. That'll give the field reporter a little bit of additional movement. And then I'm just going to take the concentrate action to gain a focus. Because she's got the lodestone, so she kind of wants to end her turn there just to light that one up. Okay, so I'm going to go with Madame Sibel. The newly buffed Madame Sibel. Yeah, she, she got some, uh, some nice changes. Uh, because before, I think she was in that Carver territory. <laughs> the worst territory to be in. Yeah, so she's going to start off with her bonus action, which is one of the changes that she had, which is undivided attention. Stat 6 needs a 12, and this puts a 6-inch aura out. And until the end phase, any enemy models in that aura get minus 1 to their dual totals during their activation. Yeah, it's really good. So she gets the 8. So that goes off. And she's undead, so she gets plus one move for being within six inches of the emissary, again, with the flesh crawls. So she's going to have a wander just up to here. And then she's going to attempt to bring Betty with her. So she's going to use her beckoning call. Move the target it's moved towards a friendly model in its line of sight. Stat six needs a 12. The, be the be Betty is going to relent, <laughs> unsurprisingly. And she's going to flip... Nails it. Nails it. Pixel deck is firing on all cylinders already. Yeah, uh, that mask would give me target gains distracted plus one, but I'm not going to take that trigger. Are you sure? I I'm, 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 I'm quite sure. Just to give Bet a normal attack rather than a positive flip attack? No, 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 no Bet's Beth, fine. And because Betty is undead, she also gets that plus one movement. It's basically everything apart from the effigy, isn't it? It's, or emissary. Even. It's the emissary himself doesn't get it, and Seamus and the copycat are both living. Ah, of course. So they don't get it. But... When does Seamus ever actually walk? <laughs> when he can teleport. I mean, secret passage. Secret tunnel. You've got to sing secret tunnel every time you do it. I feel like that's a requisite of this. 
I'll, He's not looking you, you don't, you don't want to hear my singing voice because that will just be like instant minus 10,000 <laughs> subscribers. <laughs> Drop off straight away. Um, so I'll take the move towards Sybil herself. So Betty has moved up and that is Sybil done. So my beautiful field reporter is going to go next and she's a really cool model. So she's got a bonus action called follow a lead, which is six inch range and she can discard a scheme marker. So we'll take this one. And she may then move up to six inches, which is quicker than her normal walking pace. That would take her just to this position here. She's going to walk a second time because she can sense a scoop. She's going to walk just behind this barrier here. My intention is that she will probably be the target that I pass the lodestone token on for next turn. So she's going to be, unfortunately, the poor lass who probably gets poisoned shortly. And then she's just going to drop or interact a scheme marker just down to that position there. So I'm going to go with the mourner. And she's, first of all, going to take the focus, uh, concentrate action to gain another focus. And now this is, again, one of the other interesting changes because you've now limited to having two focus. So I'll take it now on the first turn so that I can gain benefits from it later without really stacking it up for late game. Yeah, Distracted also cancels the focus now, so there's really interesting interactions at play now, which I think is a really positive change, to be honest. It stops that kind of focus five bombs that you used to have with certain things. It does, and Distracted always felt maybe like a bit of a weaker condition. It has made some impact on this game because we both make use of Distracted we as do. well. And you'd be the Colette player again. Her changes that knocks her down, actually, the distracted helps her, doesn't it? My argument is that although she maybe got slightly nerfed overall, the crew now as a keyword I've is much, much stronger. And because of the way that we tend to play in keyword, it I'm helps. very much looking to try her out on the table in the new with yep. new changes and with Nagato, a new enforcer as well. Come on, yeah, he's, he's great. He's amazing. So, first action is going to be to concentrate. I'll put the token on in a second. And then she's going to take a walk action to just move up behind the cluster of ladies of the night. And the reason I'm doing this is because the overlapping cut Scarlet Temptation that I mentioned when we were talking about the crew build up means that anything that gets close to them is going to be on negative willpower flips. All of the models at the front are terrifying and she removes Ruthless for everything within six inches. Very good. Very, very good. She does have a bonus action, but there's nothing for her to do because it basically means I treat corpses as schemes. So she's going to then end her activation there. Over to one of my two henchmen here, Alison Dade, and she's basically a mini version of the Master Nelly, but she has got some cool tricks. The first one she's going to do, she's going to put Impassioned Defense on the Dead Rider. So this is range 8, as you can see from this. Stat 6, needing a 4 to get to 10. So we have got a 1. That has not been successful. So let us cheat in this 5 of Tomes. You now, sure you want to cheat? I thought you'd just leave it. You know, I fine. could, could, could. Uh, I'm going to be able to declare, though, the Surge Trigger, so I can draw a card from this, which is good. So I've drawn this mighty card here. And that will allow me to put two shielded on Mr. Ryder, which kind of needs it because he is one hell of a fire magnet. And then Dade is quite simply going to mosey herself just to this position here. And she is also going to join the concentration party for now because guild be guild. Okay, so I'm going to pull a move that I like to call the panic. This is the longest distance play I think we've recorded in Malifaux. You're going all the way across the board here. Yeah, balls to the wall. Uh, I'm going to go with Benoit. Um, because she's within six inches of the emissary, she is undead, she gets plus one movement. So we've already pre-measured this. She's gonna take a seven inch walk to here. She's then gonna take another seven inch walk to here because the movement lasts throughout her activation. And she's then going to remove a corpse marker using her bonus action of rise again. Now you can target corpse marker ignoring range and line of sight. If the model is buried, she can unbury, but she can then take uh, the charge action issue after she removes the corpse marker. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realise that this can just be used to remove a corpse marker even when she's on the board for a free charge. So she's going to barrel straight to here, mate. She does. And it's something I didn't realise. It's something that uh, our henchman Dave uh, really uh, sort of zoned me in on. <laughs> I just I, dropped it into the chat and was like, by the way, you know you can do this. And we were like, oh my God. And then he did it to me in a, in a game. He's like, what? And so I'm not manipulative now, sadly. So... Uh, I'm going to probably spend my focus here as you well, barrel into it. I'm going to spend this focus and um, I'm going to have a double positive. So it's worth saying False Witness has the innocent bystander ability. So attack actions without a TN uh, gain a TN of 12. So just in case we both black joker here by some miracle. Uh, and your stat of? My stat is six and I've got a built-in positive. So that's why I'm flipping three cards. And I've got defense of five and I'll be flipping two thanks to my focus. So a 12. And a three, so 12 high for me, my love. That's good. Thank you, Pixel Deck. But I wait for the inevitable death cheat now. 
So I'm on uh, 17 at the moment, mate. 17? Well, I'm going to let you have that. Ah, oh, it's because he knows Alison Day is on the other side of the board that can turn off Bet's trigger, so you can freely charge me and then bury away. Well, it, it, it may, like I say, I'm now over your half of the table, which doesn't normally happen. You, you've played me at my own game there, Darren. How dare you? Okay, I'm going to go with Mr. Pale Rider. He's not impressed with Bet Noir kind of coming across the board, beating me at my own game. So he's going to focus and he's going to fire a shot with his pneumatic rifle. Now, he is ruthless, so he ignores her terrifying, which is pretty good against resurrectionists. And he's got stat six versus Bet's defense. Of six. So, straight flip for me. And I get, oh, a mighty eight with that two. I will see your eight and I will raise you to nine, sir. Oh, well, that is disgustingly rude. Well, I am going to cheat in a five to go to 11. I'm going to be that guy. You're going to be that guy? Well, I'm going to cheat in and I am going to cheat in this nine to go to 15. Oh, very nice. Now, do you want to declare your I've had enough of this trigger? I will declare my trigger because it's built in, but I have actually got the suit as well. So I basically do what Colette used to do yeah. uh, automatically. <laughs> so on this the is fade away, yeah? This is fade away. So after resolving, I bury myself and I will prevent up to two damage if the attack had been successful. Lovely. So I will hand you the lovely lady back. It gets her out of my grill at least, which I appreciate for now until she pops up next turn and wreaks havoc. And then the rider is just going to do the, the taxi service that all these riders do. He's going to go with a ride with me. So he needs a six for this to go off and he's going to choose to take Nelly with him. He flips a 12, he's super successful, he really likes the taxi service. He is simply going to go to here, as we've pre-measured, and he puts Nels in base contact, and she is just going to mosey right up there, and that is the end of Mr. Ryder. Okay, so if you're activating your big, scary, versatile model, I'll activate my big, scary, versatile model. <laughs> you're it's scary it's like that. Technically, yes, I big, suppose. Big Bird. So Big Bird is going to bounce over, because he flies. Only moving six because he doesn't give himself his aura because he's not undead, despite being the big bird. He's actually living. And he's going to use his bonus action, or the first of his bonus action, for exhumation to try and create two 50mm height to blocking destructible coffin markers. Basically, you're going to block some bridges. I like the way I said it better. <laughs> so, it's target number 14 with a stat of six, so I need an eight. And there's a nine. Nails it. It's always quite hard one to flip sometimes. When we play games before, it's always one that needs to cheat, so it's always nice it's, to top deck it. It is one that I, I do normally try and cheat it if I can because it is kind of a key ability. His other bonus action, if we get to it, is also really, really good. So first things first, places it within six inches. It doesn't say entirely within six inches, so... A bloop. coffin appears on the bridge. Bloop. And I'm actually going to take his trigger, which is built in on crows for unexpected zombies. So I'm going to summon... A mindless zombie. Now, because they're mindless, they don't get a pass token, because they basically count as having activated, and you put it in base contact as a tactical corpse marker, don't Ma you? Aww, brains. Lovely. Uh, I'm using the old uh, Rotten Bells, but uh, I think they fit in lovely with the cruiser. Yeah, I think they're a really good thematic piece. Is he doing anything else for his second action now? His second action, he's going to hop back over here, because I really want that bonus movement aura to cover as much of my crew for the second turn to try and get to a second marker sounds like a really good idea sounds like i know what i'm doing oh to me time for some master shenanigans we go nelly and we're going to see if we can use one eighth of the abilities that are on her card here because she is just all of the shenanigans in the world first thing she's going to do she is going to knock that i'm going to walk just to this position here which is within an inch of that coffin marker but staying within eight inches of fiona gauge and that's because we're going to use the bonus action get the story so this is on a friendly model only, and basically I can push the model six inches towards a scheme marker, and then if it lands on it, other stuff happens. So it is stat six needing a 12, so I need a six for this to go off. We conveniently get a six, that is very nice, and Fiona pushes herself six inches towards a scheme marker that is within her line of sight. Now the way pushes work now in GG2 means I can pick an edge, so I'm gonna pick this edge to this edge, and basically push myself six inches to there. She'll then be able to remove the scheme marker, and this would pulse out to distracted uh, within three inches, but there's no enemy, so I don't really have to worry about that. So that's nice and straightforward to begin. Nelly's second action is that she is going to remove this piece of destructible terrain, which is within one inch of her. Boo. Boo! And then she is just about within eight inches of a uh, doxy, isn't it? Here? It's a doxy. So I'm going to use the Twisting Their Ideals ability. Now, this is stat seven 
versus the Doxy's willpower, but I do need to pass terrifying test first, don't I? Terrifying 11, because terrifying no spirit's touch. Terrifying 11. So I'm willpower 6, so I will need a 5 here for this to go the off. The only thing I'm going to just check, you're well out, so you're not minus 1 to it. Ah, Sibyl's yeah, right? Sybil's ability, isn't there? So, get a 7, so I pass the terrifying test, and then this is going to be stat 7 versus the Doxy's willpower, mate. Now, I'm going to drop my focus because I think bad things might happen if they don't. Yes, because the the shenanigans that can happen here. So, you've got Flipping Space just there. I'm on eight. Apparently, <laughs> apparently I'm on 18. <laughs> well, I guess that's how it is. I guess that's how it is. I'm just going to cheat in the red joker because... There. Yeah. So, what would happen here is you would take uh, damage within three inches equal to the number of markers, different markers that are within three inches of you. You have none. You don't need to worry about that. What you do need to worry about is the fact that I can choose to take the mask trigger here, which is, could this be betrayal? Non-master only. Target must take the charge action, even if engaged, controlled by this model. And that is why Darren very cleverly knew what was happening and spent his focus. So, Doxy's move five. Doxy's move five. They only get the plus one when they're so, in their activation from the aura on the emissary. She's going to charge to here, which puts her conveniently very much just in the rivery bit. So enjoy that, my dear. And she's going to take an attack action. So you're going to have to guide me through here. Can I just nick the Doxy's card from you? As I'm going to make an attack action with her. Doxy's card? And uh, I will I will use my amazing, amazing... The zombie's going to zombie. tank this. Right, so this is going to be stat six versus the zombie's defence. Of three. And I can't declare triggers from this because obviously triggering off a trigger. So, ooh, not bad. 14. Nine. Anything you'd like to cheat, my dear? I will not cheat. So, a negative flip. Are you hard to wound for a zombie? I am hard to wound for a zombie. So, a double negative flip. So, three cards lowest. Three cards lowest. Two, three, four damage tracks. That is a severe, a weak, and a moderate. Full range. So, that's two damage to the zombie. Zombies conveniently have three. So he's on a singular point of health. Singular point of health. So for a second, Nelly basically tug up some dirt on this Doxy's past life and was like, if you don't come and attack it, then uh, I'm going to release this to Seamus and he's going to find out what that you, I don't know, what, what's a bad thing for Seamus to find out? Um, that she wasn't a lady of the night, she was a fine upstanding citizen. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's Nelly all done. Okay, so if your mon master's gone, I think it's time for Seamus. Teleporting shenanigans. Shenanigans. So we're going to start off with a secret passage and we've measured out the distances so i have to be within one inch of blocking terrain i have to land within one inches of blocking terrain so from here to here the markers do count as blocking yeah the high five blocking impassable so they're ideal for Seamus here yep so this is stat seven with target number of 14 so i need some sevens first one boing lovely he earns himself uh, a poison for the the benefit there basically but... oh i didn't like that and then he's going to boing again. So you got to flip for the second one. See if you can teleport again. <laughs> Darren immediately goes to his hand. He's like, but I have a card for this. Lovely. So he cheats himself over to here. And then what you're going to do, I imagine the, the lovely delicate massage of a bullet is coming my way. He's going to shoot at the dead, sorry, the dead rider. Yeah, I keep the, the ones pale, it's because it's a skeleton horse. The pale rider. Right, so the pale rider is a defense of six versus your stat of? Six, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this focus that I left behind. To ignore the concealment. To ignore the concealment. So a straight flip for both of us. And I'm going to stone. Oh. I'm going to stone for a crow. Okay, so you're burning one of your soul stones. Stat six Off versus my defense of six. Here we go. I flip a seven currently. Like Joker! Oh. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. We, we thought it was going to happen on the secret passage, didn't we? Oh, Pixel Deck, what have you done to me? What? But it's, I mean, I'm not going to complain. I will say, Darren, we played a practice game of this before, and Seamus' gun was not feeling healthy during that game either, was it? So oh, let's hope cool. it's the only one of the game. But Seamus does have shenanigans because he has an ability to get a fourth AP as a master, doesn't he? He does. He has a course of celebration. So if there's a corpse marker uh, within two inches of him, he can take an action and ignore the italics on it. Yeah, if it's in my half of the board. So if he shoots someone, it's really handy, isn't it? Yeah, so basically, he, if he'd shot dead the, the, the false, false witness, witness, she becomes a corpse marker, he can then shoot again because he ignores really the one to turn. Because we have to say he's got his one shot a turn with that ridiculous damage track. But even without all those things, he just gets an extra AP that can't ignore italicised action. So what do you want to do for this one, mate? Uh, for this one, I think we are going to go with 
a terrorize on Granny. Ah, try and get her away from the marker. So, False Witness has got distraction, so enemy models within two inches of this model suffer a negative to willpower duel. So Seamus is, will be on a negative. What's his yep. willpower? He's, well, his willpower, What's his stat for it? His willpower is seven, and his stat is seven on this as well. Oh, wow, I've got a stat of five. So you're on negative flip versus my straight flip. I'm on ten currently. I'm on nine. That is fortunate for the granny. She thoroughly appreciates Seamus' cooperation in that endeavour. That was granny. That was Seamus. And that ends his activation, which was, as always, amazing and awesome. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> oh, Seamus. Why, why did he... I suppose that was our Pandora moment, That wasn't was, it? we just said off camera, it's like, we're, we're all right with that now. Now, Fiona Gage is going to go next. Now, she's usually very, very good if she's near a friendly ski marker, because she's secretly Batman, and she gets the hero we deserve, which gives her a positive flip. But she's not, so she's just going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. So she is going to declare a charge... If you remember our Batman bat reps, though, Tom, she doesn't want to roll like him. <laughs> like yeah, no, she does not. Batman with his, like, pillow-fisted attacks. Yep. So I do have a terrifying test I need to pass here. What Seamus is terrifying. Terrifying 12. And Fiona's somehow not ruthless here, so she's only willpower 5, so I need a 7. Get a 4, so I'm going to have to cheat in this 8 to begin with. And then I have a stat 6 pickaxe going through against Seamus's relatively weak defence, isn't defense it? Defence of it's not 4. Defence of 4. Now, so we'll ignore any positive um, to resist. So if Seamus did have a focus, it wouldn't be any benefit. And it ignores hard to wound, but he's basically one the one model in your crew that doesn't have hard to wound because he's a yeah, master. Yeah, all the living models don't have hard to wound, so yeah. So, stat 6 versus your defence. I go up to 11. I am also going on 11. Do you want to cheat? I will go to 14. 14. I will go to... Mental Maths, Tom, is what I will go to. Um, I'll simply go to 16 then, just for the negative flip. Okay. So, no triggers to declare here. We'll just flip two cards and go with the lowest. So, moderate and moderate. That would be four damage going through currently. Would I you like to stone? I will be stoning that. So because we've learned that. We've learned time. that that's the good thing to do. And... I'll prevent two of it. Lovely. So he takes two damage currently there, mate. That knocks him down to... Down to nine. Lovely. And then, to absolutely no surprise here, Fiona's going to hit him a second time. So, terrifying test. Yep. She passes. She loves it. And then she'll hit him again. Oh. Oh. oh the pixel deck's coming out here. Uh, so I'm at 18. You say that. It's still only 16. So, negative flip. This would be a sweeping strike, but there's no point doing a blast because there's no one here. So, Oh, you could blast onto Granny, mate. I absolutely could, but I'm afraid that she is... Well, she wasn't quite terrified by Seamus, but she still doesn't like being that close to it. Maybe she's just a bit too old for his his ways. Uh, negative flip. Moderate. And a moderate for damage again. She wants to hit him. Uh, I think I will stone again for that one. And I will prevent... One this time, so I'll take three. Three damage, and that knocks him down to... That takes him down to six. Now, the reason Fiona kind of had to go into him then is because you're going to go with your totem next, and I think we know exactly what's going to happen here in a second. But for Fiona Gage, it's not a bad activation at all. That'll finish her off. Okay, so as it's gone so well for Seamus, <laughs> his little mini-me friend is going to try and help him out a little bit. So, first off, he's going to move to here. I think this is one of the most fun totems in the game in terms of mechanics. Oh, it is. It's, it's absolutely awesome. And it's, it's the fact it's never the same copycat killer. He just uses little random people yeah. that he finds. Uh, oh, you can be shameless for today. And then he uses it to do exactly what he's going to do now. And this is the copycat killer's bonus action for mistaken identity. So I drop a confusion marker down here. And the copycat killer appears where Seamus is. Seamus then appears in base to base with the confusion marker. There you go. I'll give you, I'll give you that idea. Don't forget about the love. So basically, it was like Fiona was beating the living day out of Seamus, and it was like, a surprise! I wasn't actually Seamus. Not Seamus, really, but, 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 but it is. is. <laughs> uh, and for his second action, he's just going to walk behind there to get out of line of sight. But this is really good, because this again acts as a threat for the next turn, doesn't it, of having this little guy potentially he, there. He just bibbles around and really gets in the way and annoys you. Yeah, which he's fantastic at. And that'll bring us to the end of the turn. And here we are at the end of turn one. And uh, it's, it's been characterised by 
the Black Joker on Seamus, but to be fair, you're in a good position in terms of actual physical place on the board. We've both managed to score one of our strats because we've converted those markers to our respective colours. And yeah, that copycat killer in my deployment zone is not exactly what I'd like to have going on, mate. He's in an interesting spot, shall we say. Yes, he's, he's got the potential. Now, um, I think the main scrum is going to be right in the middle of the board this turn, isn't it? There's an awful lot of interactions here that can... Uh, there are. There's, there's a lot of stuff going on there, definitely. So, we've redrawn our cards. We've done the poison damage on Seamus and the Doxy. That has both dropped down, so they're okay again going into this turn. We've dropped the shield and everything we need to go, and we've re-flipped. I flipped a five, Darren flipped a four, and you very kindly allowed me to uh, take there, the lead. There were no cheats, because I'm running out to soul stones quickly after turn <laughs> one. <laughs> so, we'll go to the first activation of turn two, which is going to be Nelly in the guild. Right, so I am leading the way for this turn. This is my hand of cards that I'm going to be playing with. And we're going to start with the Pale Rider because I've got a pass token, thankfully, for your zombie. And I feel like I'm going to just remove the zombie to take that away. So the rider is all about getting within range for his bonus action. So this is where he's going to move seven inches. We've pre-measured this to this position here. He's then going to declare a charge action. Now, it's worth me saying I've got three of these um, Forged in War Chasing Fate tokens. So I'm going to declare a charge, which will take me to this position here, which is conveniently within six inches of Darren's crew. Now, I will gain a poison for my, uh, my endeavor here because I went over the hazardous terrain. I'm now going to declare an attack because I have got Gunfighter, so I can attack you with my pneumatic rifle, mate. So this is going to be stat six versus the zombies, mighty defense of... Of three. You've got flipping space on the river, mate. Uh, I'm on 12. I'm on 13. Well, no, sorry, I'm on 14. I lied. I'm stat six. I'm still on 13. Okay, so negative flip. Dual negative. I'm hard to wound. You are terrible in that way. So, three cards lowest. Three cards. Moderate. Moderate. Well, he explodes. I, I, I think he did explode. I think he did. Um, but you get your corpse marker, which is handy. I'm going to place the corpse marker there. Nice. And we will remove a zombie. Now the rider's going to do what he's actually there for. He is going to try his bonus action, which is revel in conflict. So this is stat six, needing a 12. Gets the six, but it's not a six of rams, which is what I'm actually looking for. So unfortunately, it's a high card. I'm going to cheat in this 11 of rams. To declare the devastation trigger. So first of all, the reveling conflict ability says friendly models within six inch pulse heal one or heal two if they're engaging an enemy model. That doesn't affect anyone because no one's taken a wound. However, devastation for four rams, which would be the one that I flipped here and the three that I can use my tokens for, I can pulse out six inch range, enemy models suffer two irreducible damage and gain burning plus one. So everybody other than the totem takes two irreducible damage and gains a point of burning, which is the early turn play really simply because do it before Sybil starts messing with people. So we'll put those burning tokens out and we'll go over to Darren for the next turn. So start of the second turn, there's my hand. No stoning, because I had to use many last turn. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start off with Madame Cybelle. Uh, she is going to start off by taking a bonus action for undivided attention to put an aura up to reduce Tom's dual totals by minus one if they activate within six inches of her. Very nice. So, target number of six. Stat six needs a 12. Gets it, but I want the trigger. So I'm going to... Cheating a ram. And what does this do? Friendly models within range, heal one. Very <laughs> useful. So that will be Sybil herself, the mourner, the doxy, the big budgie. And Seamus. It's Seamus. Unfortunately, not the dandy. So mitigate the burning damage at the end of the turn, basically. <laughs> he, he, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> then we're going to do some charging. You're a big bully. You are a big bully, sir. All you did was set people on fire, didn't you? She's going to charge to there. Taking a burning with her. Yeah, you take that burning, you take it. Uh, and she is going to use her focus token and make an attack on the pale rider, not the dead rider. Defense of six versus your attack of? My attack is also six. Oh, very nice. So, eight. I am on 12. 
12 at the moment and the trigger that I've got, because she has a trigger on every single suit, is pulled here and there, push either this model or the target up to three inches. Okay, I'm gonna go to 18, just to get the ram to reduce the damage here, potentially. Okay, in which case, I am going to also have a ram to get the crit strike trigger. Lovely, so I'm gonna, Declare now that I'm going to use the Forged in War trigger because I have to do it before the damage flip to reduce damage by one. I'm also hard to wound, so your focus goes back to a negative. So Negative to a straight to a negative, basically. Yeah. I'm glad you said that because it was a bomb twist that I would have <laughs> failed. And it's happened again. Oh, no. <laughs> you got your trigger, though. I got the trigger. But the crit strike doesn't do any damage because the Black Joker doesn't do any damage. Well... Look, my comeuppance is coming. We know how these battle reports work. Better than, uh, better it's out of the way than Seamus. So I'll, I'll take that focus off. Yeah, thanks for that, mate. You got another action, though? I do have another action. I don't, I don't know how much the other action is going to help me. So after my pixel deck fails me again, and has been threatened with the microwave, <laughs> I'm going to attempt a beckoning call on Nelly herself. And what will this do? Just pull me towards you, basically? Well, it allows me to, to move your move towards a friendly model of mine in line of sight. So it could be the Doxy, it could be the bird. And this is good for Scarlet Temptation, isn't it? And what this does is Scarlet exactly Temptation what, do? This is exactly what we're trying to use it for. This is basically going to mean that any willpower test that you have if you're in one inch of a model with Scarlet Temptation, suffer a negative. Very good, right. So I've got a willpower of six. I have a cast of six. So, uh, nine. Also nine. Oh, well then. I would like to make you cheat, Darren. I'm gonna go to... Uh, you got any triggers on this so far? There are no triggers so far. The triggers I have are gain distracted plus one, or choose another enemy model within target's line of sight to get distracted. That's one. I'm not sure if I want Nelly to go yet, so I'm going to go to 16. I'm going to go to 18. Lovely. So you'll pull me in. I will pull you in. You'll reel me in. I will reel you in. Now, because I'm going to reel you in, this another one of my abilities is actually going to trigger now. So I'm going to move you towards Sibel. And now, because you're engaging a Red Chapel model, her ability for bump in the night... Engage by. Engage by a friendly Red yeah, Chapel model. I don't have engagement. So two inch engagement on her. Yep. Will mean you are now distracted plus one. Lovely, so I gain a distracted there. And the dead doxy does not actually have anything for you moving into it, unlike the Rotten Bells, where you would have gained fast on Rotten Bell. Lovely. So, and that's the end of her turn. It's totem time. I'm going to go with my printing press. He's just going to casually walk himself onto a sphere terrain just off to there. So he's within six inches of my field reporter. And he's going to try and use hot off the presses. Now this is six inch range, stat five against willpower, but she's going to relent. This would give two burning and push the target four inches in any direction. So gets a seven and it goes off. And then basically I'm going to push the field reporter, not even four inches, just here that she's within six inches of the false witness, which basically means I'll be able to hopefully pass off the lodestone token to her afterwards. So I am going to go with my emissary. And to start off with, he's going to take a focused shot at your rider. Well, that's just rude. So defense of six. Against my attack of six. Um, shooting into combat. Ooh. So straight flip for you. Yes. Eight. Uh, more than eight. Eleven. Go to fourteen. Uh, I will go to... Eighteen. Okay. That has not worked. Next one up. <laughs> the proxy base is there. <laughs> He's then going to charge. Oop. Trying not to leave Seamus behind. And your beaky beak attack is? My beaky beak, my focus is gone. Start six again. Against my defense of six again. Against your defense of six, 18. Ooh, I'm gonna go to 19. I'm just gonna double check something. Um, yes, I'll go to 19. Okay, I will not cheat that. And then I will turn my bonus action to put an aura of decay up. What does this do? So, adding the models within range cannot heal or reduce damage with soul stones. Oh, that is really good. Okay. So, we will go 
and get the four that we need. And that ends his activation. Lovely. So let's play Get Nelly Out of Trouble, because that's the Meow game, because uh, I think Seamus might blast her in the face. So we're going to go with Fiona Gage. She is simply going to make a walk action to the edge of the bridge here, which she'll inevitably topple, but we know where she is. She's going to try, and um, I've got your back on Nels. I'm actually going to stone for a mask to try and see if I can get the trigger off here. Now, I am on minus one to my stack because I'm near Sybil, aren't I? Yes. So I need a five here for this to go off. Oh, get the four. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to have to cheat in the big old 13 here for it to go off. So what does your trigger do on this It one? allows me to shove aside. So it means I can put Nelly in base contact with myself, push her four inches, and then I am able to push myself four inches and take a close combat attack. So Nels is going to be pushed... Well, she's going to be put in base contact here. I'm going to push her four inches back just as she hits this. Fiona is then going to push herself four inches, which we've checked already, but it basically means that she's going to land two there. Okay. And I'm going to attempt to see if I can hit the Doxy, which okay. has got a terrifying test attached to it, hasn't it? It has, with a negative for Scarlet Temptation. Is that when I'm within an inch of her? Within an inch of Sybil. Oh, do I have to go the full four inches then? Can I just go slightly less? Uh, push up to four inches. All right, are you happy if I just go? I am absolutely there. No, oh. no cards have been flipped. So. <laughs> right, so uh, I'm on minus one to my stat though, aren't I here? Yep, so you're on a 12, you are stat 12 effectively to pass. So I've got a willpower of five, so I would need a seven to pass here. Has it gone down right? Is that including the minus one? No, so I need oh, no, no, you need a seven. Okay. Maths. Maths. Maths is good. Hey, she's okay. But I also am um, now on minus to my attack stat as well, aren't I? Minus one to your attack stat, yes. So my modified pickaxe of a six goes down to a five versus your defense, mate. Of five. Let's see how we do. Uh, 14. Red Joker. Red Joker. About time that came up. I am going to declare my defensive trigger of regret. Lovely, which will end my activation. End your activation immediately. That's absolutely fine. That's Fiona all done. Okay, so I am going to attempt to bring something back on this turn, <laughs> and I'm going to rely on the dead Doxy to do it. I mean, only Fiona, ending Fiona's activation to get rid of an attack is always handy, so the Doxy's going to step up and get a bit of revenge here. She is. She's going to start off by taking a bonus action to try and take by the hand, to push you three inches in any direction, then push me up to three inches towards you. Step five against your willpower. Willpower of five. And I target number of 11 as well. Lovely. Do I get any negatives to this? No it... negatives because you're not close enough. 10. 15. Go for it, mate. Okay. <laughs> four inch push. It's four inch push. Four inch stick. There you go. So I'm going to move it to there. Yep, so I get a bit of a poison. You get a poison. You've also ended a, a movement engaged by Sybil. So is that distracted? A distracted. Lovely. Uh, you'll gain a poison for taking an action, but where are you going to push yourself to? Because you probably get another one here. And I'm going to end up on... Obviously you're getting a second one just for moving through Le Poison. All of the poison and burning on these crews. All of the poison, po uh, poison and burning. So that was your bonus? That was my bonus. So now we have to decide what we're actually going to do. <laughs> And I feel we want to go and maybe charge some shit. Can you charge when engaged? Oh, no, I've moved. What I'll do is I'll move just outside your engagement. Okay, so I've got an inch engagement, so you would be... I'll nudge you. Just, just nudge me a little bit. Just better. enough be absolutely off fine. there. And then you go charge. Then I'm going to charge. And I think we are going to go and charge... Let's go and charge Nelly and a reporter. Nelly? How dare you? So you've got a five inch charge, six inch charge? Six inch charge because of the budgie. So six inches will get you. Do you want to go between the two of them? Let's go between the two of them. Lovely. So, whoop, surprise. Who would you like to attack? She is going to attack. It's worth the saying that she regened at the start of the activation as well. She did. So she's on full health. She's on full health. She's going to attack Nelly. Okay, Nelly has got a defense of six with a built in squeal trigger, Ooh. so. In that case. Yeah, yeah we. <laughs> or will... serene countenance. You probably better hit Nelly, to be honest. We'll hit, we'll hit Nelly. Okay. Oh, 18. 16. So I'm going to take my squeal trigger and I'm just going to mosey just to there. I will then try and seduce you. On Nels. Again, against your willpower. Uh, willpower of six. Stats of six as well. Uh, ten. 
11. Uh, I have nothing to cheat. Okay, you would end the focus condition. <laughs> nope. Gain distracted plus one. Okay, I will gain distracted. And because of the crow trigger, another model, enemy model in the target's line of sight gains distracted plus one as well. Who would you like that to be? We will give that to... Let's give it to the reporter. This field reporter? That field reporter. Now, speaking of the field reporter, because you're ending your activation within two inches of her, she has an ability called uh, You Can't Escape the Truth. Um, you would suffer a point of damage. I will take my point of damage. Lovely. Okay, I'm going to go with the false witness, and she is straight away going to like interact and pass this lodestone token over to this field reporter here. And you can see that I've put two scheme markers out, and that is the hope that my false claim ability goes off here. So I will need a seven to be able to drop two scheme markers within three inches. I get a three. It does not go off, sadly, so we'll just tidy those away. And then she's going to try and use her Tell No Lies ability. This also requires a seven. This is a three inch aura and it says, models within range cannot cheat fate. So we'll see if she can get that. She gets a six, she does not succeed with that either, but she's passed the lodestone, that's enough for the granny. Okay, so I need to try and drag some of this back. Someone's came out to play, hasn't so, she? Someone's come out to play, so Betty's coming out to play. Betty is going to charge with her bonus action coming out of the corpse marker. She is then going to attack the rider. The rider, so I'm a defence of six. And my melee is six, with a positive. Because I feel I need it. 13. 16. Nice. Uh, double negative flip, because I'm hard to wound. Uh, I will take the crit, the built-in crit, well, sorry, the built-in, the crit strike trigger. Lovely. So three cards bit the lowest. I will do three. Three damage. And that knocks the rider down to six health. I will do it again. Attack me again. Uh, again, defensive six. Oh, Black Joker. About time mine came out, to be fair. I will have 17. Lovely. So my defensive six, that would be a positive flip down to a straight, because I am still hard to wound. Okay. Uh, that is the only suit that has no trigger. Lovely. Of course it is. And that would be severe of four. Ouch. Four damage. One, two, three, four, he's on two health left. Is he hard to kill? He is not hard to kill, so he is uh, going to be suffering from poison if you can get another damage off on him. We will attack again. we got three attacks. Oh, you got three charge. charge. Of course you do. So, oh, he's flipping well here. Uh, 14. Uh, that would be 17. Nah, double negative flip. Double negative flip. Well, you've seen your Black Joker, so you know this will be good. I'll take, in, I'll take the built-in crit strike. Lovely. So, moderate. Severe, severe. Yeah, that's definitely... Um, so that would be four. I'm just going to pull that there and take my rider again away. That was lovely effort by Beth. She comes in and she's like, don't worry, I've got this. I'll do some damage. It's all good in the hood. And that is Beth done. Over to Miss Dade then. She's kind of out of the action at the moment. So she's going to make a five inch move, just this position here. She is going to take the concentrate action. And then she's going to see if she can bonus action in Passion Defense, the little robot that's next to her. I need a four for this to go off. Hey, we get an 11. Lovely. So no triggers, but double stack shielded. And that's her all done. So, Seamus. First off, he's shuffling. <laughs> he's going to peek out he's from behind cover. He's just going to peek out from behind cover. And he's then going to take a shot at Fiona. Now, usually it's been negative, but... I get a positive because I'm the Red Chapel killer. Because... So because you're engaged, it's not like no friendly fight and get a positive to it. Very nice. So Fiona's got defense of six. And my stat is six. Uh, oh, 14. This is going to be less. No, it's not. It's oh, going to be 19 nice. with a crow trigger. And the crow trigger gives me... Execute. No, it doesn't. It gives me days, so you gain stunned and it push up to three inches in any direction. Very nice. So this will be a negative flip because there's a difference of five. Yep. And Fiona has one armor, and that's about it. Oh, so let's see what we get. A weak and a moderate. So three damage. Three damage going through to poor Fifi. Puts her down to six. She really needs a scheme marker nearby so she starts gets positive. So she gains stunned. And you may push her. I can push up to three inches. So this is where other things start to come in and I wish I pushed her closer. Uh, I'm gonna push her closer to me. Yep. To here. Now you're ending a move engaged 
by a red chapel model. Is that another distracted? So you're getting distracted. And you're ending a move engaged by Betty. So Betty gains fast. Oh, very nice. So I will put that on in a second. So that's her pounce ability. That's her pounce ability. So we're trying to just stack all the tokens there <laughs> at the moment. Um, we will then try and terrorise you. So this is your third AP? This is my third AP. Going against my willpower of five here. This Which is hopefully get some heals off my But chances. it's on a negative because you're within one inch for Scarlet Temptation. Oh, so I'm on a negative or heals. You're on a negative. Okay, so willpower five, 13, and six. So I'm on 11. You are on 11. Okay, I will cheat a four to make that 11. Lovely. And doesn't give me the trigger for mental trauma, but you get to move your inches away from me. So five inches, so you're getting me back into the poison river. Back into the poison you go. Oh, yeah. I'll get another token for him while you do that. So you heal here, mate. Seamus heals two because he's caused, it's once an activation. I'm glad we've got all these tokens that we've invested in because oh my God, there's a lot. Absolutely. And at this point, I'm just going to be a little bit tactical and he's just going to wander around to the rock over here. So he's going to walk to there. Perfect. Oh, Nelly, 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 Nelly. You're going to have to top deck your entire activation here, which is going to be interesting. So she's got a lot of abilities, but they all kind of require scheme markers being nearby. Now, I kind of want to declare or discard even this distracted. So I'm going to just try and do a few things just to kind of waste it. But because it's a terrifying model, I need to kind of top deck the terrifying test. So first thing I'm going to do is I am going to attempt to one more question the doxy. Okay. So what's the terrifying test I need to pass? It's an 11. So I'm willpower six, so I need a five for this to pass. I'm feeling your pain with all this top decking. She nails it with an 11, that is good news. And then I'm distracted, so I'll be on negative flip. I'm basically red joker fishing at this stage. So this is a negative stat of negative, negative flip stat of six versus your willpower. Or five. Lovely. Ten. Thirteen. Is that so, shot? Yes. So that does not go through. But that's one gone. Uh, she's gonna do it a second time to see if I can pass the terrifying test. She does. Good. Distracted out the way. Always good. And then again, this distracted will be the negative flip. Oh, that's better. Uh, 13. Ten. Awesome. So, she is successful. I'm going to declare the headline secrets exposed trigger on this, on her one more question. Now, one more question is a really interesting ability that you've probably seen elsewhere. So, target immediately gain slow. Always good news, more tokens. And then if it's engaging an enemy model, it suffers one, three, four damage. So I'm going to do the damage flip here, but it'll be on a negative. Because I'm hard to wound. Double negative then, in that case. So, weak. Weak, moderate, so that will be a singular point of damage on the Doxy. Doxy is now on seven. And then I would then get you to take the interact action, which you must take even if you're engaged. However, the journalists have some fun abilities. They have the um, exclusive interview ability, which is on the reporter, Nelly, and for IT, but it's going to be the reporter's one that's important. When an enemy model within two inches takes the interact action, it's treated as a friendly model, and the action is controlled by this model. So... I'm going to take control of it and I'm going to have you place one of my scheme markers because that's actually more important for me. And wow. then other things start to happen. So Nelly has an ability called Breaking News. After an enemy model within eight inches resolves the interact action, she may draw a card and gain focus plus one. So she drains that and she gains focus. And then the reporters have a slightly alternate version of it. They have um, the chasing a story. So this is why you can proc it twice. They just gain a focus. It'll clear this reporter's distracted, essentially. So it's a really good way of kind of tidying up a little bit of the shenanigans that go on. You see, it's done a lot of tidying up, but I'm still happy with the fact that the Doxy's forcing your master AP to go on here. Exactly. Now, I've got the option here of getting Fiona out of trouble or, um, again, starting to annoy the Doxy and make her take actions. I'm not entirely certain which I'd like to do. I can risk it to try and top deck another terrifying or I can just put a marker down myself and kind of push Fiona. Do you know what? What we're going to try and do is we're going to try and push Fiona. So I'm going to go with a bonus action of get the story. This is a stat six needing a 12 and I'm going to target Fiona Gage. So 
We get a one, it fails. Right, that makes my decision for me nicer and easy. So what I'm now gonna do for my last AP is I am going to, ooh, one more question. Shall we go for one more question one more time on the doxy? So I need to see if I pass the terrifying test. Terrifying 11, I like saying it. Uh, she passes it, because she's will pass six. That's not bad. And then I'm gonna drop my focus for a positive flip here. So. Uh, I've just picked up my deck. There we go. The other way. So a two and a six. That six versus your willpower. Fourteen. Oh, I'm on twelve. So it does not go through, sadly. But Nelly has managed to rinse through a few AP. And most important thing is we've got a scheme marker down. Now she's got a lot of other variety of abilities that she could use, but they're more to do with when she's being attacked or when she needs to heal up. So that is Nels. All done. You can see that I've also just remembered Public Outcry. When I was talking about what was on Nelly's card, I realised that Bet now has got the media presence on her because she killed my rider, she gets a distracted adversary, which doesn't she matter does. too much. But... There's, there's so many tokens around this table at the moment. Thank you, Art Force yes. Thank you. <laughs> Go on, carry on, mate. What are you going to do? So, mine is a very, very straightforward activation. We are moving the dead dandy out from where he was hiding. He's got move six because of being within range of Budgie, but he's only moving five. Taking all of his counters with him. And he's going to pass over the lodestone to the mourner. Lovely. I am going to spend a pass token. And the mourner is going to take a very, very straightforward activation. She's going to take a million counters with her. And she's going to move. She's got a six inch move, measured it out. She's got plenty to just get behind here. So she's going to be taking the lodestone over there. And that is her done. Lovely. So Darren, you know that dandy of yours? I, I remember him. He's, he's been helping you out. He's been a good lad, hasn't he? He's done all right so far. He's also been finding out all your secrets because he's an undercover reporter. So basically, curse you. curse you, he's undercover. So he pops out unburied and you basically get to put your minion somewhere else in your which, deployment which zone. Which conveniently checked his. Yeah, stuff. I've got my double shielded. I won't bother with the staggered because simply because he's going to end his activation in a second. He's not going to move. All he's going to do, because he's slow when he pops out because he's had to take off all of his wig and his hat and everything and somehow climb into a barrel. He's just going to casually take the interact action and just place that there, mate. And that is him all done. So you may have realised what one of my schemes is here, Darren. I, I guessed it was Breakthrough. <laughs> we, we had a, a brief discussion just to check what where what abilities and everything are on the card. Yeah, because I've got Deadly Pursuit, so auto escape. So you need to kind of basically be in base to base with me here, don't you? We do. And thankfully, I have just the man for the job. You have just the man. So do you want to pass him over to you? Because yep. you're going to use the bonus action here. Bonus action. So I've placed... Go on, you can pass me Seamus. I know where he was. We've got a proxy base on yeah. the other side of the screen. Uh, there we are. Thank you. He's just popping out on the other side of the board. And then he is just going to... He's going to start off. He's going to take a shot. Because, oh, you're going to shoot me. How dare you? Because why not? So my defence is five. My gun stat... It, it's not quite the same as Seamus' gun, so it's only stat four. That, that would be a one. Uh, yeah, I, I managed to beat that with a three. So so I, I didn't shoot you. <laughs> it's, been, it's been as successful as Seamus' gun. And, and then I'm going to walk around and hug you. And just stand in base contact. So I preemptively thought I had the, uh, the turn done then, but actually we've got a field reporter left. And it's, quite, it's an important activation. It is kind of an important activation. So she is quite simply going to uh, try and flash photography the, the doxy at the moment. So this is a terrifying stat of 11. Still 11. So I need a 6 here of my willpower of 5. Let's see how we go. We get the red joker. About time that came out. So she's successful, but let's see what happens. So it's that six versus your willpower, mate. I'll find again. Uh, 15. Less, 11. Lovely. So the crow trigger is convulsions. Um, so enemy only. Move the target up to three inches. And then the target must either discard a card or this model may move up to three inches. But the actual ability here gives you distracted and staggered. So you get a distracted and a staggered, mate. And then the convulsions ability. So I can move you up to three inches. Uh, guess what? You're going to kind of hang out next to Fiona. Just there. But is that almost how I discard a card? No, then the discarding the card part is I can move three inches now unless you discard. I will discard this mighty, mighty three. Lovely. So that's nice and easy. Uh, the next thing I am going to do is... Well, I'm tempted to do it again. I could just put it down here. 
So you've got a distracted and a staggered. Do you know what? I'm going to just try and do it again, mates. This is going to be seeing if I can pass the terrifying test again. I can with a 12. Mighty. And then this is stat 6 versus your willpower one more time. I get 8. I get 12. Yeah, you're fine with that one. And then simple last activation. I'm going to eat this ski mark. And we've already pre-measured it. It's going to gain me a poison, but I'm going to walk just to here. Just so that I am able to place my lodestone. And that will bring us to the end of the turn. And here we are at the end of turn two. And that, that was a, an interesting turn. We've got a lot of damage whittled on a few models here, haven't we, mate? Absolutely. There's a, sort of damage being thrown around a lot of the models on the table. So um, it's, it's interesting where that's going at the moment. And nothing to declare so far for either of us. We get our first point for these corrupted idols where we've basically put the markers out for our ley lines. My uh, undercover reporter has pushed away, but unfortunately I've not been able to score my very obvious breakthrough yet because of your little mystery man holding out within four inches of him. Um, aside from that, we're pretty we're pretty tokened up, aren't we? We've got a lot of conditions that are still there out are knocking around. There are a lot around. of conditions around the table, definitely. So, we've done our redraw, we have flip for initiative, Darren got a six, I got a five, so you're going to go first or second, mate? I think, because you have a pass token this turn, I'm going to let you go first. Lovely. Well, Darren's made me go first, I don't really know what I want to be doing with this activation, so I'm going to go with the undercover reporter, so this is my hand of cards for this turn. And yeah, I thought about running away a little bit and playing kind of kiss chase with Seamus, but I'm just going to go after the little mini-me version. So I'm going to declare a charge. So you're right just to move him with an inch of the copycat killer, mate. Just shuffle to there. So, terrifying test though to start with, which is going to be a test of what? It's 11, even though he's mini-me. So I'm well past 6, thankfully. So I need a 5 for this to go off. We get a 3. What a fantabulous start. So... We're going to have to cheat this already. I'm going to have to cheat in a mighty eight for it to go off. And then this is going to be stat five with an inbuilt ram versus your defense of... Five. It's higher than Seamus. See how we do. Oh, seven. Sixteen. So that fails. That doesn't work. Uh, I'm going to hit him again. Try to see if we can pass the terrifying test. We get a 12, that was successful. And then again, stat five versus your defense. A five, 13. Uh, uh, fails again. Um, and yeah, it's not great, is it? Not really great, Darren. I am gonna use a bonus action. I would love to just follow a lead and just disappear, but I think I'm gonna use confusion in the ranks. So this is gonna be targeting the dandy. This is gonna be stat six versus his willpower, and he would have to take the interact action if available. The interact action is available, and he's defence 5, but I am manipulative. Okay, so negative flip for me. Yep. That's 6, and an 8, so 12. I am also on 12. Okay, could you please take the interact action for me? I would love for you to do that. I will take the interact action to remove markers. Lovely, so I'm chasing a story. Uh, my A6, even of a ram, doesn't have any triggers. So because I'm chasing a story, I just literally gain a focus. That's about it. And that's him all done. Okay, so this is my hand for turn three. It's it's great. That was, that was after <laughs> we stoning. We both stoned, actually. Yeah, we should both say that we did both did stone for our cards. So that leaves you on two and me on one. Yes. We don't we don't like that. We don't like that. Uh, I'm activating Bet Noir. Bet Noir. Bet Noir, who is fast and distracted. She's only got two conditions. She's a loser. No. <laughs> uh, she, gonna catch her, man. She's going to use this corpse marker. Yep. To charge. And you get charge for your gauge. I'm going to charge to there, engage Fiona. Lovely. So you're distracted will basically mean you're on a straight flip here. Because you've I, got an inbuilt pause. My inbuilt pause. And this is going to be stat of? Stat of six. Versus my defense of six. See how we do. I will go with eight. Uh, 17. I will, I will leave that. <laughs> Don't worry, you've got two more attacks to come. <laughs> Twa. I'm fast. Three more attacks to come, yeah, because you've got your bonus then. I will... Go again. Swing again, but not distracted this time. 19. Uh, not 19. I'm on 10. So I will go up to um, 17, just to put you on a negative. Okay, it puts me on a negative, but I will take the mutilate trigger to give you slow. Oh, oh, terrible. All the conditions. If you're already you haven't even let me put a ski marker out yet so I can get my bonuses here. I'm just going to rinse her. So negative flip here, mate. Moderate and weak, so two. Two damage, she's armor one, so she'll take a one. 
Uh, she's now on her grit frantic, grit frenzied level, actually, which is good, but still not amazing. Uh, we'll do it again. Yes, you will. Go for it. Uh, 11. 15 this time. Oh, stop drawing high cards, Darren. Um, I will go to 18. Um, yes, I think that might be okay. <laughs> Is that acceptable? That's acceptable. And you've got one more? It's only acceptable in the 80s. <laughs> and we'll do it again. Okay. 18. 13. I will not be cheating here. I will take the inbuilt crit strike. Not the inbuilt crit strike, the crit strike that's actually on that trigger. Lovely. So, negative flip. Just push this back up. It's a weak. Found a moderate, so three damage. Three damage. I will. So, three damage total. Two up to three or three up to four? Two up to three. Two up to three. I'm going to stone it. So, I'm armor one, so it goes down to two. And then I'm going to reduce one of it. So I just take a point of damage there, because I feel like that's probably necessary for Fiona on three health. Anything else, mate? No, that was it. Lovely. So I'm going to go with the False Witness. She is going to make a five inch walk action, just this position here. And then she's going to try and see if we can go for this False Claim again. So I need a seven here, step five, needing a 12. We get a five, we have to cheat this one as well. I'm flipping all my weak cards. Let's hope there's some good stuff to come. So I'm gonna cheat in this eight for it to go off. And this is a three inch drop of scheme markers. So I get to drop two. And then I'm gonna to have to remove one of these scheme markers or one of a scheme marker on the board at the end of the turn, just to ensure that I'm behaving properly because this is a false claim at the end of the day. So it's not the most acceptable. So I'm gonna chuck them there. And then I'm going to try my bonus action, which is Tell No Lies. So this would be a step five, needing 12. Gets it with a 10, so that is a three inch aura, which is models within range cannot cheat fate. So that, that at the moment is the Doxy. And Nelly. And Nelly. And that is her done. So I'm going to go with the dead Doxy, who um, didn't like the expose last turn. She didn't like the candid photo that's taken off her by She the did reporter. not like it at all. So what we're going to go with we will start by taking her bonus action to pull here and there. So take by the hand. I'm on a negative to willpower jewels. Yeah, because of the distraction, the false witness. Who are you targeting? I will target Fiona. Fiona Gage, who will get a positive flip because there's a scheme marker nearby because she's the hero we deserve. So I'm going to now flip three cards and take the lowest, and you're going to flip two and get the highest. Do I get a negative because you of You do scar? get a, high, a negative for the scar temptation. So you're on a straight and I'm on a double negative. Awesome, right, let's see how we do. I've got a willpower of five. Uh, my stat is also five. So I'm 14. I, I am not. <laughs> Wait, do you have Uh, no. <laughs> so that was a bonus action. But it gets rid of the distracted, which was important. It does. Let's get rid of that. And then I'm going to charge you. Charge you, Fiona. Charge you, Base to base. Into base to well, base. There you go. So you're not going to go worry about poison, hook. luckily. And see what happens now. So Scarlet Temptation is negative to both jewels, defence and willpower. Just willpower. Just willpower. So, so you're, you're attacking my defence here? I'm attacking your defence. You're on a positive. All right, that's good. So Fiona Gage is defence of six. And my stat is six. And remember, you can't cheat fake because you're within three inches of the old lady. So, oh, that's not bad. Oh, why have I got to flip those two now? I mean, it's just as well with your one card, but uh, 19, mate. Uh, that would be 18. And that's you done with your slow? That's better done with her slow now goes. And you're staggered for your doxy? Yes. Awesome. Oh, Fiona. Fiona just turned and faced her assailants. Like, she is not having a good day right now, is she, mate? Uh, she is going to attack the Doxy now. It's worth the same the Doxy did heal to last turn because of your Grave Spirit's touch. So she's back up to six. And what's the terrifying test I've got to pass? It's 11. You watched me fail this with my willpower five. So well, I you need... are on a positive because of your scheme markers and then a negative for Scarlet Temptation. Don't... So it is straight, isn't Actually, it? Actually, no, I don't get any positive for this because this is only during opposed duels. Ah, I so didn't you know saying... that. So I'm on negative. You're on negative for Scarlet Temptation. Jesus Christ. Right, come on. No. No. Well, that's Fiona Alden. Gains of poison is sad about life. But loses stunned and slow. slow. So she's done a little bit of a swapsy, but she hasn't got rid of a distracted, sadly. Okay, so I'm going to go with Big Bird. And um, Big Bird is going to focus, and he's then going to attempt to charge the reporter. Lovely. So this focus is basically to get around her serene countenance. Yep. So he ends there, gains 
A poison. Yep. And then this is going to be what? Stat six versus my defense? Stat six versus your defense. So uh, straight flip for the two of us. Uh, 18. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the contemplation begins. Contemplation does begin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that. Okay. And I'm going to try his bonus action. Is this the can't heal one? No, this is going to be the corpse markers. Oh, Sorry, the, the, coffins. Yeah, the coffins. Yeah, we need to get some more coffins out. So you need a, what, eight for this, was it? need an eight for this. No, that's, that's not an eight. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is why I checked my hand. There we go. Right. That's an eight. I'll just bring it slightly up so you can see it. And he's going to put some coffin markers down within six inches. So I think it's... I'll cut away, measure it out and... Yeah, lovely. So I've decided to take the built-in trigger to give myself a mindless zombie. No pass token. Like you said before, it's mindless. Uh, so coffee marker down and mindless zombie, and that's his activation done. Lovely. And it's working saying you take a point of damage because the reporter is just revealing that she has, you know, illicit photos of the budgie. Yep, budgie. Remember that one time you were on the Muppets and not Sesame Street? We all find out. Oh no, oh no! Anyway, Darren, you've gone done it now. You've gone messed with this and there's clearly a corpse marker in my half of the board. So do you know what? I'm going to charge my mascot into your, uh, your zombie here. No. Mascot, I say. That's the guild ball showing that is. So this is going to be a propaganda machine attack. Um, stat five versus your defense, mate. Okay. I'm going to drop a focus because I'm an angry little spider monkey. You've got flipping space there. I, I'm a zombie, so this is where <laughs> I'll probably hit a red joker. Uh, 17. Uh, 10. Okay. I'll declare the inbuilt headline secrets exposed, which I'm not sure if it'll work on a zombie, but we'll see in a sec. Um, what did I say? 17, so straight flip. Negative because of heart to wound. Ooh, okay. Weak. And weak. Two damage. I will take two damage. I've got one left. Zombie's able to take the interact action? Okay, they so are mindless and insignificant. Does not matter then in that case. And then I'll attack you one more time. Oh, leave me alone. Stat five versus your defense. Six. Uh, Twelve. That does not go off. I wish I would have been able to kill him. And that's me all done with the printing press. Okay. So Madame Sibel. Sibel. Sibel is going to activate and she's going to start off by trying a beckoning call. Um, the lovely Fiona, lovely Gage. Fiona Gage. So this will give you a willpower, which puts me on a negative up to a straight because of scheme, is that right? Yep, because it's an opposed duel. So it's willpower six, target number of 12 for me. Uh, I've got a willpower of five. I flip. Oh, hang on. No, that's fine. It's oh, fine. one. <laughs> like you like, no, but he's flipped rubbish. It's okay. Um, yeah, go for it, mate. Yep. And what will this do? Just move me? It's move, you move your, moving inches towards a friendly model, you can move towards me. Gain another poison for that benefit. You can gain another poison, and you've ended your movement engaging. Bet, bet noir, it's not your activation, so Betty's going to gain fast again. Oh, Bet gains fast, there we go. Any distracted for Sybil? You gain distracted because you're engaged by... The lovely lady. The lovely lady. Uh, I'm going to then go for my bonus action, I think to try and get minus one to your dual totals during activations, mainly to try and get the heal trigger off. So you need a... Need a six, but hopefully with a ram. That's not a six with a ram. That is a seven with a ram. Lovely. And this is a, how much heal? This is a heal for one. And the range is six inches? Six inch aura. So I'll tick all of those off. So it's basically gonna be the budgie, the doxy, Sybil herself, Betty's not been hurt. Uh, then, I will make a melee attack. Lovely. So I'm on a defense of six. Melee of six. No negative to me here though. So, uh, 13. 18. Yep, I can't do anything about this. So negative flip. Yeah, the mask trigger is pulled here and there. Push either this model or the target up to three inches. Nice. So negative flip. Negative flip. Severe of four. Is that with two cards? Ooh, da -da. Yes, yes it is. Severe with four. Uh, it takes her down to a one health because she is hard to kill, which means the poison is basically going to finish the job for you this turn. Where would you like to push me? Uh, let's push you, or I could push myself. You could. As well. I might just push myself a little bit 
further back. So I'm just going to shuffle myself over here. Just to observe the action. Just to observe. And being, being a, a, pl- a spot to respond. Lovely. Over to me, we're going to go to the field reporter before she dies a horrible death. She's going to eat this ski marker just to follow a lead. Which will give her a six inch move, which we have pre-measured just to the shoreline here. She's then going to take the interact action to throw this lodestone over to Alison Day, just so she does something this turn. Now we'll have gained a poison for walking through this toxic lake, so it's not doing a great job for me here. However, I'm then just going to move five inches, and I am just going to move literally to that position there. And that is the field reporter. All done. Okay, so I am going to go with my mourner. And my mourner is going to attempt to blast your reporter. What's the ability? This ability is feed on grief. If you're within two inches of line and of corpse mark, get a positive to it. As I don't, and you've got serene countenance, I am going to use one of my focus tokens. Love it. And it's against my willpower. Against willpower. Willpower of five. My stat is also five. Oh, 18. Less. <laughs> Less, damn you. Less. Uh, for my second action, I'm going to pass the lodestone. Back to the dandy. The OG dandy, the OG real dandy. dandy. OG dandy. And no bonus action, so she is done. Right, it's Nelly's turn to do the big transatlantic flight journey across the board. So she is going to walk. Now, she's going to have to walk five inches, which will get to here, which will gain a poison. Then she'll have to walk again. So she's going to gain two poison, which she's not particularly happy with, but she can take it, to be honest. She can then see the ski marker that's just underneath the undercover reporter. So she's going to attempt a bonus action herself. Now, she's outside of the, uh, the no cheating range of down here. So I would need a six for this to go off for the get the story bonus action. I flip a one because Can't. reasons. <laughs> so she's got one more left. She's going to try one more question, the copycat killer. So terrifying test currently. Terrifying 11. 11. She passes with a seven. And then this will be a stat of six versus your willpower. Mate. Which is four. See how she does. Uh, 12. Uh, that would put me on 11. I'm not cheating. Okay. So this would give you slow and... If you are engaging any models, which you are, we'll do a damage flip. So this will be a negative damage flip, and I'll declare the headline secrets exposed trigger as well. Any hard to wound for this guy? No. Just negative then? Just negative. Moderate. And a weak. That's a single point of damage. He takes his point of damage. He doesn't like his point of damage. <laughs> Says, leave me alone. Uh, and now you will have to take the interact action. Now, I don't think I'm able to control this because I haven't got the exclusive interview ability. I'm also insignificant, so I can't take an interact action. Oh, that's disappointing. What did I flip? Did I get anything else that I could use? Uh, no, I flipped the tome, so it would have been headline secret exposed. So you can't take it, so I can't get any of the benefits, sadly, which is disappointing. But Nelly's on the other side of the board, which is the main thing for me. Okay, very straightforward activation for me. Uh, the dandy. It's going to throw the lodestone over to Madame. I am then going to use a simple walk action to move over here. And I'm going to attempt to prop a murder mystery on the ski the co- the ski marker underneath your whatever it is. Undercover, Undercover reporter. reporter. Words. Words escape me. Okay, so this needs a seven. That's a one. That's a seven. And I'll remove that and turn it into a corpse marker. Lovely. Uh, I think at this point I'm going to declare I'm going to spend my pass token. So we'll give you another activation in a sec. Okay, so I'm going to go with the copycat killer. He is going to start off, because he's slow, taking his single action, and he's just going to try and shank. The undercover reporter? Yeah. Uh, Defence of five. Okay, so I will flip with my attack of five. Oh, red joke. An eight. I'm all good. I'm all good. Uh, we've already put the marker down. I'm then going to use my bonus action for a confusion marker. And hello, friends. <laughs> How are you today? Swapsies. Swapsies. I mean, you can take your burning on Seamus as well. You know, you can have him as well. Oh, no, I don't he want comes to, out the ether don't, on fire. <laughs> don't, don't want burning. And that's the copycat done. That is the copycat done. Alison Dade then, last one to go for me, because she's manipulative, so it's probably the sensible thing to do. She is going to fire a Derringer shot at Big Bird. I'm going to fire a shot at him. <laughs> Terrifying? Terrifying 12. Right, I have got a willpower of six, so I need a six here. 
She gets an 11. She's happy, but your defense goes up by one because there's a big old marker in the way. So stat six seven. to seven. I'm going with a stat six. Let's see how I do. I'll drop a focus. You know what? We'll drop a focus just to see if there's anything cool in my deck. Uh, a 10 and a nine. Oh, that's a two. I'm on 16 currently. I will go up to 12. Okay. So a negative flip goes up to a straight flip, goes back to a negative because you're in cover. Yep. Severe and moderate. That is three damage on the big bird. So he goes down to six. Next thing she's going to do is just see if she can impassion defense herself on a bonus action. She needs a four for this to go off. She gets a nine. She's super happy. She gets the double shielded, but we'll just put the, the one here. And then she's simply just going to mosey just so that she's within base contact with this marker. Okay, so Seamus. Seamus, what are you doing, Seamus? Who are you shooting, Seamus? <laughs> well, he's going to do sensible things first. He's going to walk up to here. Comment section's already going mad because you said Seamus and sensible things, and it's right. like, how dare you? Seamus and sensible. He's going to force the lodestone to be thrown to the big bird. Yep, get the point there in the bag. Get the point. That's two. He is going to try and terrorise Fiona. How dare you try and scare my girl? So uh, stat seven, you're on a negative because of Scarlet Temptation. So I've got a stat of five more willpower. So I'm going to flip two cards. I've actually realised I picked up those cards if they're in my hand. So I get uh, uh, 11. I'm on 17. Yeah, it succeeds. So push your move away from me. Just into that, basically. Into that. Uh, but you heal, more importantly. I heal two and give you another distracted. <laughs> As if she needs it. As if she needs it. Anything else from the big man? Now he's got a gun. He's got a gun. Does he want to use his gun? Oh, he didn't move far enough around to be able to shoot him. So, I think we will try and try and teleport. Okay. Secret tunnel. Secret tunnel. Secret passages. Gets a five. That's not what he needs. He's going to cheat in. Thirteen. Lovely. <laughs> He's keeping up for the end of the turn. I am teleporting, and I'll have a look at where I want to go and cut back. Yeah, well, it'll bring us to the end of the turn, won't it? So we'll measure around, and then you'll see it on the halfway shot in a second. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. End of turn three, and uh, well, we've both kind of got into an interesting situation here. So I had to spend my last soul stone to keep Fiona alive, because her armor at one of the poison, but still it would go through. So I managed to flip the heal there, um, or the reduction, shall we say. Alison Day has got me my third marker. You've got your third marker, so we've converted that one to purple because we can. That works. Um, the poison of the river and the fire is doing an awful lot of tick damage. And we've already said, like in the practice games we've done, the rider, if he's allowed to live by turn three, causes so much damage with the amount of burning and irreducible. But even now, with the legacy of the fire and the poison with all the pushes you've done, my models aren't particularly healthy, mate, and you've got everyone who's got a little bit of a tickle on them, haven't they? Everyone's got a little bit of a tickle on There's a couple of models that are close to dying. Um, like you say about the rider, that's the reason I stoned for that on turn one. Yeah, that to try and get rid of him, yeah. Just to prevent the bonus action from being used, because I'd, bon I'd actually taken the stun trigger. Yeah. Um, but Black Jokers are a thing. So yeah. it's a really finely balanced game at this point. I'm really, really interested in what Tom's... Uh, well, neither of us have declared anything. No. So it's 2-2 currently. We, we, we have remembered to take schemes, we promise. Yeah, we just, well, Darren ruined mine with his proper murder mystery. How dare you turn it into a corpse marker? But yeah, it's going to be interesting now because I think I think we can see what's going to happen here. I think someone might have a bit of a, a let them bleed that he's going for. But Nelly being in your backfield is not particularly nice for you either, is it, mate? So it's going to be no, an interesting... An interesting situation, so we'll see exactly how this is going to play out. We've drawn our hands, Darren spent his last stone to stone for better cards, and then we flipped for initiative. I flipped to nine, you flipped to three. Yeah. So I will be leading the way, and we'll see how we get on as we go to turn four. Right, I'm just going to get Fiona out of the way, because she's going to be a free AP kill for bet otherwise. So we've got rid of the ski marker, it's worth saying, they had to remove one at the end of the last turn. So Fiona Gage, she's going to try and attack Bet Noir, who's terrifying of... Terrifying golf 11. 11. So let me just show you the hand that I'm starting with this turn, guys. I mean, Fiona's going to be like all the negatives in the world, but this is the hand that I'm playing with. So I need a six to get this attack off. Get a nine. She's loving it. And then if I get rid of one of my million distracted here as I make an attack, start six versus your defense. Of six. Let's take our negative flip. A 12. And a four. I'm on 10. I'm on 15. Ah, that fails. 
I will not take my defensive trigger. Okay. I don't think. No, I will not. Fiona Gage will attack you again, to no surprise. So she'll see if she passes terrified. She does. And then a negative flip. Uh, 14. 17. There we go. I've got the, the trigger and I will not take it. There we go. That's Fiona. All done. So I'll get a valiant last stand. Okay, so this is my hand for the start of turn four after using my last stone. I think these stones have been swingy, but not... <laughs> swingy, but not amazing. Not amazing. It's worth saying, my barrel man is not taking his hide in the barrel, so he hasn't got his staggered and he hasn't got his shielded here. So, I'm going to charge him, even though he's disguised, just to get closer to him. Yep, that makes sense. And then I'm going to try and shank him. So, I'm going to drop my focus, if you'd be so kind as to remove that marker for me, mate. I will also be dropping mine. Try and reduce the token bloat on the board. Yep. Uh, defense of five for me. And an attack of four for me. With a fancy cane. And I'm on 15. I'm on 16. Ooh, I will go to... Uh, words and stuff. How much health does the dandy have? He has one and he's on fire. He has one and he is on fire. Uh, I'm going to cheat in the red joker. Okay. 19. Uh, I will not cheat in because even with the red joker I would not get to you. <laughs> uh, I am going to prop a murder mystery just because I can. Why well, did a proper murder mystery when I could? Because the 13 of crows. <laughs> and I'm going to take that corpse marker off to put another corpse marker next to it. <laughs> Easy peasy. Hoping that I got rid of a black joker. Turn done. Right, our girl Nelly's going to go first. She is just going to make a move action just to this position here, just so she is a little bit closer. And she's going to twine, she's going to twine, she's going to twine with their ideals on your dandy, mate. This is going to be stat seven versus your willpower. Oh, four. Let's see how we do. Uh, eight currently. Uh, Eleven? Uh, I'll go to seventeen. I, I will. I will not. Awesome. Uh, you'll take a point of damage for each marker that you're within. You to die basically. Ah! Curses. And then Nelly has got her bonus action and another AP left to go. Now, unfortunately, I really struggle to get ski markers out this game. It's not usually an issue, but I'm not being able to get like my movement shenanigans that I particularly want to. So what Nelly is going to do, quite simply, is she's going to interact to put this marker here. And that, really interestingly, also gives her a heal because she has plant evidence. Every time she takes the interact action, she heals too. So she's back onto full health at 12 HP. And we've got a ski marker ready to go there. I think that was probably the best option just to stop Bet from completely rinsing her. I mean, Bet can still do some damage against her, but we'll see how we get on. I'm going to go with the Doxy. She's regening two, so she's back up to seven out of her eight. She's feeling good. She's feeling good. That burning and that poison that she took earlier, it's, it's fine. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. It's all right. She's going to take by the hand on Bet Noir. So this is going to attempt to push Bet, and then I can follow up. It's, I'm going to relent because it's an attack action, but I need a, a six for it to succeed. Get the dine. Lovely. Where are we going to push? We are going to push. We are going to push away from Fiona. Yeah, you run away. You run away. And then we're going to push into base to base. Oh, okay. Well, into melee. Take, I'm going to take a focus because you are manipulative. Yep. And then I'm going to swing. Okay, my defence on my false witness is five. I have got innocent bystanders, so you'll need a TN of 12 on this attack. And my melee is six. Lovely. I'm on a 10 so far. I am on more than a 10, I'm on a 12. I, after considering the triggers that I have, will go to 13. Mm, that's fine, mate, go for it. Okay, so that gives you distracted plus one. Of course it does, because there wasn't enough distracted on the board. <laughs> and a two, three, four damage flip with a negative. So a negative flip. Severe and moderate, so three. Three damage. Oof. Puts her on two health. Okay, interesting. Very interesting. All done? All done for her. Over to me, I'm going to go with the totem, the printing press. He's going to slap that zombie in the face. This is going to be stat five versus your defense, mate. 
My defense of three. Hoppa! For uh, whatever it is, 11. Six. Anything? No. Negative flip because you're hard to wound. And a difference of five, so double leg. Uh, I was on 11, you were on six, yeah, double negative flip, so one. What joker? Two. What joker? Nice, dead. Kills the zombie. You're going to put a oh, corpse no! marker, so in there. I'm going to put a corpse marker. It's going to go underneath you within three inches of Shameless because I couldn't see the zombie before, <laughs> which is why I didn't do it. <laughs> right, I am going to charge Shameless. Okay. I'm going to skim there, just to this position here. Um, I am going to make an attack. So terrifying, what, 12? 12. Come on, little robot, you can do this. I need a 8 here for this to go off. Get a 2. Guess what, Darren? Have the 8. <laughs> Uh, so this is going to be a mighty stat 5 versus your defence off. Four. Come on. Oh, 18? Uh, that will put me on 10. So straight. I'll declare the headline secrets exposed trigger. Which does? Make you take an interrupt action, basically. Uh, straight flip? Yep. Oh, he wants it. It's, uh, it's a moderate. That's going to be three damage. That takes me back down to six. And then I'm going to ask you to take the interrupt action, my dear. I don't control it, sadly. What would you like to do? So, what benefits does she get from the interaction? Focus. Or, depending on the distance here... No, just focus. Focus for... Alison. Alison Dade. Okay, I will put a scheme marker down. Cool. Yep. No, I'll just, I'll just remove scheme markers. Lovely. So I gain okay. focus from that with Alison Dade. And that is the end of my printing press. Okay, so we're going to go with the copycat killer. And the copycat killer is going to walk around to here. He's then going to take a shot at the investigative undercover false witness thing. <laughs> All of the abilities. All of the abilities. So you get a positive here. I get a positive. But I, it's manipulative. So, so straight, straight flip. flip against my defense of five. My stat of four. Okay. Oh, 17. Less. No cheats. <laughs> And then are you going to do Swapsy Dozy? We've got, we've got the old Neverborn marker here for a reason. So, <laughs> and then Seamus near the terrain that he wants to be near. He's going to go to stand on the bridge. He's going to go there. Lovely. You're done, mate. That is the copycat killer done. Let's go, my false witness, before she's summarily executed by Seamus. So, she is going to try her bonus action. Which is tell no lies. She needs a seven for this to go off, and this would be the no cheat aura. Gets a 13. So that's a three inch aura around her where models cannot cheat fate. She's then going to attempt to jacuse the doxy that's in front of her. So this is a stat five willpower attack. Now, I am on a negative because I'm distracted. You are on a negative because you are within two inches of me, and I have the distraction aura. So, your willpower on your doxy? Five. So. Both of us are negative flip. See what we get. Uh, 10. 17. There we go. Does not succeed. Takes away the distracted. Didn't like those severes though. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just going to do it one more time, mate. So I'm just on a straight flip here versus your negative. negative. Oh, a mighty six. A nine. Nine. I will go. Did you make a terrifying test? I did not make a terrifying test. We'll count that as the terrifying test then. Absolutely. Uh, what do I need to pass? It's terrifying 11. So I'll cheat in the sixth pass. And then I'll do my straight flip there. Um, 12. What does this do no, to me? No, sorry, 13 even. Uh, this would give you adversary and a 1, 2, 3 damage track. You may do that. Sir. Thank you, sir. Are you hard to wound? I am hard to wound. So double negative flip here. Um, the adversary really doesn't matter too much, but just to show that I don't like the dog seat will do that. <laughs> so, uh, weak. Weak. Moderate. One damage to you, sir. She, she accuses six. you of heinous crimes, but alas, is due for death. So I've just realised I actually didn't abide by my own, like, no cheating aura, so we've just washed the damage away from the dark See there, because I was like, you can't cheat, and then I immediately cheated that terrifying test. Okay. Who are you going with, mate? Uh, Seamus. Big man. Seamus, he's, he's going to lose his confusion marker. Yeah, because it'll be confusing. He's less confused now. Um, he's going to draw a cannon. She's going to cannon it up. So I've got no manipulative now, sadly, and you get a positive to this. I do get a positive to this. So no cheating, but... Defence of five. Against an attack of six. 
Oh, it's not a bad start. Oh, it's a bit bit better from your end, mate. A bit better. It, it's a game of a, a game of two halves there, I feel. I'm on 16. On 19. So negative flip. Negative flip, and I have not got a trigger on that. I don't think you need to worry here. I think you're going it to kill just it. With, it's <laughs> just whether I moved another model. Was it getting there or something he's got? Yeah, but that you would have to still be alive for that to happen. Which is not going to happen. Okay, so moderate. Blackjack, please. Moderate. Six. Ah, uh, boo. I'll put the course marker down. So Darren's been agonising for the whole game about who the hidden martyrs are. Bad news for you, mate. <laughs> that was the one. Uh, second AP. And the other one is probably over here. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely this one. Uh, you know what? I get um, adversary and distracted. You do get adversary and distracted because you have committed an atrocity and Nelly is very unhappy and she's going to write you. I mean, to, to be fair, Seamus won't care, will he? Because he, any bad headlines he, he loves. But yeah. You're a terrible person. There's public outcry. Okay, we're going to try and terrorise. Terrorise Fiona. Terrorising Fiona. So, distracted? Uh, it doesn't affect this because I'm not attacking you. Oh, you got distracted, don't I you? I got distracted. I've got a willpower of five. I have a stat of seven. Uh, I'm on 15. I'm on 13. Yep, you said the decks have the, the flipped the other way a little bit here. So you successfully terrifies me. Uh, five inch push away. Five inch push away. Into the waiting arms of Sybil, I think, here. Yeah. Uh, we'll Pretty angle much. just to keep away from Sybil. Oh, I, okay. can, I can go base edge to base edge. She still wants to be able to move about a little bit. That makes sense. So you heal another two HP. I heal another two HP, which puts me on eight. He's almost recovered from the, the blasting from the start of the game. He has. Uh, You've still technically got two AP, and you can even ignore, ignore a talent. Yeah, Yes, you can do the things, because there's a corpse marker within two. I can do the things. So, so what's your first normal AP out of your three? I don't know. This is where it all gets confusing. Um, Should we do a tactical cut while you measure up? We will have a tactical cut, yes. Okay, and Seamus is going to take a concentrate action. Can he assist himself to remove fire? He can't. It has to be another model within two inches, I'm afraid. Then, then he won't. He'll just be, my hat is on fire. Yes, he, he, will, he will think about it and then he is done. So Betty is going to go, and once again, she's fast. She's super quick. Moving to seven because she's within six inches of the budgie. She's going to make a first AP to walk to here. Second AP to skirt around Sybil, making sure that she stays out of the engagement range, engagement of, Fiona. range of Fiona. Then she's going to charge over here. So into my field reporter, who has got serene countenance, but you've got a positive flip built in. I do. So straight flip, it is against my defense of five, mate. Okay. Uh, 11. I will go to 13. Okay, I can't cheat this. So, difference of five, so single meg. Yep, crit strike trigger, you declare. I will declare a crit strike, you're on two, two health. Two health, so. I will, I will declare a crit strike. And, and Red Joker. Black Joker. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Why? But I'm going to use my last AP to attack. So you've moved once, moved twice, charged. charged. I should have removed a corpse marker to do it, I will apologise. I will remove this corpse marker. There you go, you're going to attack me again. So, straight flip for you, because of Serene. 16. Oh, just below, sadly, so you're going to be okay with this. That is um, 40. And I will take the mask trigger to one with the knight to bury the model. Very nice. Bury yourself, you mean, here? Yeah? Bury yourself, yes. So, week of two. Week of two. That will sadly kill her. So, I'll drop a corpse marker down for you. And that will end the poor reporter. She almost touched Lucky there, but the uh, bet's ability to remove a corpse marker to get the free charge is clutch, given her fast as well. I will also get distracted. You will, adversary and distracted. We'll sort that out in a second. But we'll take that off board. And that's her done. So again, I've spent my pass token, mate. Back to you. Okay. I'm going to go with the emissary. The big budgie's going to pass the lodestone over to the doxy. And he's then going to try and put some corpse, mark corpse markers, coffee markers down, just to get things in the way. He's going to fail, but I, I, I think I want this to happen. So it does happen. So it does happen. Within six inches of him. So we're going to... 
basically line the bridge with coffins. Mm. So you just put two down here, yeah? Going to put two down. I'm not going to bother with a, a zombie for this turn. There's enough corpse markers for me to play with now. And I think the last thing I'm going to do is he is going to move now that he's not carrying the lodestone to here. Lovely. Easy one for me. The undercover reporter is going to go. He's going to take the interact action just to put this scheme marker here. He's then going to use his bonus action to follow a lead to remove this to move six inches because that is quicker than him walking. And then shockingly, he's going to take the interact action one more time and just pop that over there. Okay, so Sybil left for me. She is going to use her beckoning call on the Doxy. Doxy's going to relent. Doxy, Doxy didn't need to relent. Doxy didn't need to relent. <laughs> going to move five inches towards. Let's put it there. Taking a load stone armor burning with me. She's then going to concentrate for focus and she's going to attempt her bonus action and just top deck a ram for a healing aura. No. No. And that is her done. Last activation of the turn then is going to be Alison Dade. She's going to attempt to impassioned defense herself. She needs a four. She gets a 13. She loves it. She gives herself two shielded. And that's going to be important because she's just about to walk across a poison lake. Uh, she's going to move five, which takes us to this position here. And then I've already measured it. She's going to move five just to there, which would gain her a point of poison. But the shielded is going to eat it, basically. And that is the end of the turn. And here we are then at the end of turn four. And there's been a lot of points scored there, mate. Do you want to go with yours first? Yes, I decided to go with the uh, Hidden Martyrs on the dead dandy and the dead doxy, because they're both dead. And that's why the dandy just ran in screaming. And also why the doxy went in early. But she managed to live a lot longer than I expected. She to. definitely did. Now, I have also declared hidden martyrs. Mine was the false witness and the undercover reporter, who you might see is now just ran behind some trees in the top corner of the board. And I also declared breakthrough, which I think surprises nobody. No. I think it's very clear that I have breakthrough and you have the, uh, the let them bleed at this stage with the damage that's gone out. So we've done a little bit of a push. You also managed to get your other strats. You're not going to need to focus on that this turn. You're on pure damage output this turn. I am indeed. Whereas Alison Day, for me, she kind of needs to somehow live and end her game on a marker. So we've got rid of everything else. So adverse, we've done our burning damage and poison damage where it was relevant and we have now drawn fresh cards and flipped for initiative. I flipped an 8, Darren flipped a 2, so we are very closely poised to score 5-4 to the guild, and I'm going to let Darren lead the way as we go into this last turn. And this is my hand going into the final turn. It's looking better than it has done, or am I bluffing? No. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Big Budgie. Big Budgie, he's, he's, he's been useful this game. He's been great. He's stuck around. So he is going to focus, and then he's going to charge. Lovely. So he's going to go into Alison Dade, who's manipulative, just to give you a straight flip. Yep. Uh, Dade, it's worth me saying, has got fast, because she's got the plot is afoot, because you declared a scheme, which I completely forgot up until this moment. Uh, I'm going to drop a focus here. I imagine you're going to be spending yours. I am spending mine. So, it is my defence of six. It's my melee of six. Oh, okay then, let's see how we do. I'm on 11. I'm on 15. Um, I will go to... 18. I will not. Okay. I will then start dropping some more coffins. More coffins, more coffins, more coffins. Need an eight. Deck, last, you love me on the last turn. So that's a nine of times, and you're going to put some coffins down. I'm, I'm always running out of them. <laughs> Terrible when that happens. It's awful. So I'm going to put one there. And one there. Lovely, you're making me go the long way around. Making you go the long way around. And that's you done? Me, that's, yeah. Okay, we're going to go with the, uh, the little printing press that could. He is going to go first and he's just going to simply declare a charge to this position here on your little copycat killer. So this is my hand that I am playing with this turn. 
We'll see how we get on. So, uh, stat five versus your defense, but terrifying test to pass first. Terrifying 11. Terrifying 11. I need something good. That is not the something good. It fails. That's that's fine. Don't need that. What I am going to go for is the hot off the presses, which is going to be targeting Big Bird. So I need to pass a terrifying test here. What's terrifying for Big Bird with this one? Terrifying 12. 12. So I'm willpower four. Get a one. I'm not going to succeed with that one. So I'm going to cheat in this nine. So I do pass my willpower four. And this is going to be a stat of five versus your willpower. Of six. See how we do. Ten. Fourteen. Um, maths. Maths. I will match you on 14. What does it do? Uh, it will give you burning and push you four inches. 15. There we go. Get you to burn your cards. And that is the little printing press order. Okay, so after much, much, much You're deliberation, <laughs> <laughs> um, I've gone with Bette Noir, who's used her bonus action to come out of the corpse marker over here and make a charge into Nelly. Lovely. Uh, against my defence. Against your defence. Of six. My melee attack of six with a positive. Lovely. And I've got a defense of 10 currently. 18 and 19. Oh, 19. I will go to 15. Okay. And I'll declare the squeal trigger on my defense. Just bear with you one second. I'm taking the crow from Mutilate to give you slow. Lovely. Negative flip. Moderate. And a week. Two. Two damage to the Nels. Puts her on nine health. And she gains a slap. Your next action. Actually, actually, no, I'm going to move away. That would be sensible. So I'm just going to move to there. I am going to walk over to you. And I'm going to hit you again. Okay. Defense of six. Defense of six. Eighteen. Oh. The cards are helping you here. 12. Uh, I'll take the tome for 18. Okay, straight flip. Uh, no triggers because it's the only thing that has no triggers. I'll declare my defensive trigger. Moderate of three. Ooh. Uh, one, two, three. Six health left. So I'm just going to squeal three inches just away. Right. Anything else? No, nope, that's her done. Okay, so after much, 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 much deliberation, <laughs> Sybil is going to take a walk action. She's then going to take a charge and she's going to try and slap the silly reporter. Lovely. So, start six versus my defense of six, is of it? Six. So, we'll see how we do. I'm dropping my focus. I am on 12. I'm currently on 10. I will go to 17. Okay, I'll decline the squeal trigger. Okay. So you're on 10, so straight flip. Uh, I am on 16, sorry, 12. 12, so negative, negative flip. flip. I will declare my trigger because I've got one uh, for a blast, but it's irrelevant. Okay, so two cards lowest. Two cards pick the lowest, Red Joker. Uh, that's a, a week of three. Three damage, wow. One, two, three, she's got three health left. And where is she pushing? Uh, I'll sort that in a second. Have you got any other thing else you need to do? Uh, she's going to attempt her bonus action to just make your stuff more difficult to do. She gets it on an eight. So, uh, minus one to my willpower jewels? Minus one to all jewels within six inches of uh, oh. Madame Sibel. And I'll sort my squeal in a sec. I'm going to go with Nelly, and as we can see, she has just kind of shimmied herself within two inches of Bet Noir outside of the melee range of Sybil. But I'm still at a minus one to my stats, aren't I, mate? You are, yes. So, I am going to take the interact action, because I've got Don't Mind Me and I'm outside your melee range anyway, just to pop a scheme marker down there. That'll heal Nelly too, because she has got plant evidence. Now, she is slow, so she's only got one other action. So she is going to try and... Uh, one more question, Bet Noir. So I'm going to pass the terrifying test first. Bet's terrifying is? Bet's terrifying is 11. 11. So Nelly's willpower is 6. She gets a 3. I'm going to have to cheat in this mighty fine five. And this is going to be a stat six down to five because of minus one uh, versus your willpower, mate. Okay. Oh. Eight. 14. And does not succeed. And I think that's pretty much it. I'm just going to double check something and we'll come back. And yeah, I think we'll leave it there. Nelly's not going to need her bonus action for now, so I'll end her activation. 
Okay, so very straightforward for me. I'm going to attempt to disengage from the printing press. From the printing press. The mighty printing press. Right, he is a stat five versus your defense. Or five. Uh, 15. 15. Okay, so. Not cheating, so double negative. One, two, three. That is a week, so I reduce it by two, your move, mate. So my move is three. So you just push yourself three inches. So push three inches to here. I'm going to attempt to shoot Alison. Okay, so you get the positive flip or you don't because they're not a Red Chapel killer, are you? I am a Red Chapel killer. But your keyword is not engaging me, the effigy, as much as he might as well no. be. Engaged by another Red Chapel one. Oh, that is true. <laughs> In that case. He might as well be, to be fair, but that keyword's pretty much bolted onto him. I'm going to take the shot anyway. Yep, go ahead. So double negative because I'm manipulative. Yep, so I'm just, I'm just fishing for Red Jokers. I don't uh, even know if I've seen it yet. Defensive six, 17. Less. But the important action, we're going to put... The swap a -roo. The swap a down. Just put any marker down, maybe. Yeah. Take Seamus. Take Seamus. Seamus, you'll... And he'll pop back there. And that is him done. Seamus will get a poison for his benefits, but I don't think he cares at this I'll, stage. I'll, yeah, I'll leave you. Yeah, I'll, I'll not care. <laughs> I think he's all right. And we've got Alison Day left to go for me. Over to Alison Day then, she's going to go and then my undercover reporter can basically score my breakthrough. So she is going to remove this destructible terrain because she's got fast. She's then going to attempt to disengage from Big Bird. Big Bird will attempt to hit her. Uh, I'll drop my focus because why not? And I've got a defence of six. And I've got an attack of six. Twelve. Uh, Nineteen. Okay. So I succeed. You succeed. I'll do a quick measure and we'll come back. So Alison Dade has just pushed herself wide for her third super fast point. She's simply just going to walk five inches just to here. And then easy peasy, she's going to try a bonus action just to impassion defend herself. She needs a four for this to successfully go off. She gets an eight, she gets double shielded, and that is her all done. Okay, so the mourner's going to walk out from hiding on the back lines, which is what she traditionally does. And she is going to take a shot with her feed on grief on Alison, who's not mani no, manipulative anymore. I'm going to drop the focus that I've had since turn one. <laughs> Against my new willpower of six. And see what happens. 14. 13. 12. <laughs> 11. I, I, 10. I fail. I fail. And that is her done. Easy peasy for me, the undercover reporter is just going to move his staggered three inches to this position here and he's going to interact to put this marker down here. Most important last activation for me, Seamus. <laughs> he's going to move. Well, you know, Doxy could swing the game. She, she, she could. She could. <laughs> there might be something. He's going to charge for his second AP. You're not firing the gun. Not Blast firing for the gun. me. Blast not firing me. the gun. I'm going to drop the focus. Positive flip then. Positive flip. Uh, your stat is what? Six. That's my defense of six. 14. Not 14, I'm on 10. Okay, so negative to straight. And this has a 235, and I got the tomes, which doesn't give me any triggers whatsoever. I would love an executor where you've still got cards in hand. Straight flip. Straight flip. This is for it. Oh, severe. Severe of five. Nice. One, two, three, four, five. She's on three health left. And gives you injured. Ooh, very tasty. I'll get an injured token for you. I'm now going to terrorise you. So it's against my willpower? Against your willpower. Stat seven. I am on 13. I am on nine. Okay, so you move your... Uh, it's up to six inches away from me. Or what's your move? Five. five. So, back away there. Yep. Now, I heal two. Oh, it's worth saying my shield would have taken a damage away, but... And your injured would have lowered my willpower. But I don't think it makes too much difference. So she's on four health. And I'll push you again with Terrorize. This is your course for celebration. Course for celebration for Terrorizing again. Uh, I'm on one less, so 12. 12, I'm on 11. Don't have anything higher than that. So that's her done. And then you just got the doxy left to go. Yeah. Okay, so the last activation for me is the Doxy, and she's, she's gone all the way across the board. She, she wants to come back. <laughs> so she's, she's going to take the, the little 
copycat killer who's been an absolute star for me. She's going to take him by the hand. No, no, she's not. She, oh. <laughs> so all she's going to do is she's going to take two walk actions and go and stand on the bridge and look pooty. And that'll bring an end to the game. So we'll go to the end phase and tot up the scores, but handshake on camera, my love. Good game, sir. Good game. Right, we'll cut back in a sec. And here we are at the end of the game. And we've just realised, actually, that black joker you just randomly flipped would have actually swung the game. It would have actually it would have given me... So the pixel deck is now more rife for burning because you would have actually been able to move and then engage Alison Dade, who was a higher point value. Yes, and I'm over half wound because I healed two at the start of my activation, so she's ended the game on... Pretty healthy. Uh, well, she, she takes one for burning at the end of the game. She's still been on seven. 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 So, anyway, you well, have I've got... Just, just morally... You're just going to remove the... Oh, yeah, the Big Bird, I suppose, this time. <laughs> yeah, I was stupid in that last turn. I didn't realise how low Big Bird's health was, and I should have done something slightly different than Disengage. But, say la vie, we have got one point for you for Corrupted Ley Lines, the second point of Let Them Bleed, which would be the first one that you're scoring, because I only have the Undercover Reporter who's on full health. And that would then mean that I would get Breakthrough... And I don't get a ley line, and I didn't get my other hidden martyr because annoyingly putting the staggered on my barrel man meant that I couldn't quite get him round to Bet Noir with a push, which would have been fishing for points anyway. So we believe by our scores, it is six points to six, finishing on a very, very well fought draw. Absolutely. That was, that was such an entertaining game, and there were so many swingy moments in it. I'm going to lament Black Jokers, but I don't think they changed it. That last turn, yes, it denied me a yeah. point. But some it, of the flips mid-game were going in my favour. My hands were never as, as hot as they were in the Mizaki game. <laughs> the pixel deck giveth and taketh away. It does. It's done it two games in a row. Although, to be honest, I won one and drew one of those games. So it's still behaving itself. <laughs> so we'll go to the end game and we'll see you in a sec. What a good game. What a game. To come back. Absolutely. And, oh. and I think, until I see the comment section, I think the rules were relatively all right. I think I remember uh, things well into activation. I think there were, there, were, there, there were some things that we sort of picked up on as we were going along, but... It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. They are great crews to go against each other. You had all the board domination, but the actual yeah. scheme pool of GG2, I was eking out it, those points. It really, really does suit, I think, both crews, and it was a really good mixed set, uh, schemes that we had, a really interesting strat, and that was a fantastic, really different board to play, and I think the river made it such a, a, an that interesting... Poison, that poison yeah. really ticking down was interesting and it affected the game. And that last turn, both of us could have won the game with one yeah. or two different... Like, that Black Joker for you and me maybe not putting Staggered on the Undercover Reporter, and we also both that, could have got the that, Hidden Martyrs. That slow that went on Nelly. On Nelly, There yeah. was a lot of things, and that's the great thing about a really good, fun, narrative, close game. Yeah. The result isn't as important as what actually happened. We, we spent time talking about yeah. those moments. They, they are cinematic... And that's what the game is about for me. I mean, definitely the guild came off worse in terms of the body count. I think uh, Seamus has got a few new journalists he can well, add to his crew. Yeah, I mean, thank God he's got the ability to uh, heal from like in a willpower test because otherwise he took a, a lot of damage early on. Like, we're going to find this out when Chris and Courtney are on later. I'll tell you guys now, killing the rider is the key part of that crew because I yes, lose my healing, I lose the devastation. It, it was, and... The obviously the you got to decide who the MVPs are, but there were some great plays in printing the game. press. Printing press is the MVP. <laughs> printing press. <sighs> but no, we've played, not the pixel deck. Not, not the pixel deck. Failed me. Failed yeah, me you went this time. down. The black joke account is definitely in your favour for this one. But um, I think <sighs> we made a real effort to try and play slightly more in keyword. We've got one out of keyword model. And actually, yours yeah. and mine might as well be in keyword. Yeah, because they're kind of like necessities for the crew. There's a couple of times I do play without the emissary, and I go with a rider and a restless spirit. But that's two out of keyword. So yeah, I'm, I'm cheating. Cool. But no, it's fantastic to see the buffs that have gone to Seamus and the benefits that he gets from Sybil. Is Sybil yeah. was. Irrelevant at the time. Well, she was in Carver territory, let's be honest. And we know where, where Carver is. I you were using this. This is going. We know exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get so much hatred for this, but I don't care. <laughs> um, the only time Carver has actually done really, really well in a game against me was when he killed Sybil's old variant because he's ruthless and ignored her territory. I've gone on to the Carver podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, really, really, I like the crew. The changes that have been made are great. I want to try those rotten bells on the table. Yeah, they're really fun as well. And I think the, the change with GG2 not being able to start focus, the distracted, the distracted huge, huge difference The distracted was huge because both now. of us were actually playing that. Playing to that straight. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed it as much as we have. Now, if you want to find out a little bit more about how to play these crews, we have an Alpha Master video overviews that you can find down in the description below. Obviously, there's our Harlefo podcast. If you really like the content we make, you can get yourself a swanky t-shirt like your modeling or my modeling here, uh, either through our Teespring store or via becoming a patron over on Patreon. But we're really happy to be back. We're Absolutely. really glad to be here. And actually, it felt like kind of riding an old bike again, just being able to record and play. Yeah. The, 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 it's a long game recording it but um, absolutely worth it such a good game such a good result so we hope you enjoyed it yeah massive thank you to you Darren and massive thank you for you guys for watching and we will see you in the next one bye hi guys thank you very much for watching our content it means the world to us if you'd like to see some more videos they should be over here and if you'd like to support our channel keep these lights on you can find links to our Patreon and merchandise in the description below see you later